Yes, guys, you know what time it is. It's your boy, David, at the Irish Hotspur, Ireland's number one Spurs fan, the world's biggest Harry Kane fan, bringing you the build-up as Tottenham look to build on the FA Cup victory as they host Southampton today. And, of course, we are joined by uh, Jack Kanicki, Philip Brady and Spurs. And we'll start with Jack, co-host, my man. How are you keeping? Keeping well, Dave. A bit nervous about this one because it feels like, you, you know, nervous because this should be kind of, we should be getting a big result here. We should be having a very comfortable, I feel like, sort of performance, similar to how we played against Brighton. I kind of expect more of the same, maybe against Southampton at home. And so I'm a bit nervous whether the boys can actually replicate it. Looking forward to seeing what the rest of the panel has to say. We have the godfather, Philip Brady. Dave, doing well. No, 100% we do. And uh, we'll, we'll save Sean's little introduction because everyone wants to hear it, so we'll bid the suspense. But, of course, Jack <laughs> mentioned the godfather. Philip, how we keep him, my man? Yeah, good. Very good. Looking forward to tonight. Uh, yeah, I suppose a little bit apprehensive. You, you are before every match, really, you know. But uh, mm. I've got a feeling that I think Conte has instilled an awful lot of staleness and stiffness into this team. We're not going to be... When nobody's pushovers anymore, I think from now on, White Hart Lane or Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, whatever you want to call it, is going to be fortress Yeah, Tottenham. And we are not going to give up anything at home from now till the end of the season. Love you that. know, I'm starting to get them vibes myself, Philip, for sure. And of course, we are joined by Sean from the Spurs Talk Show. Sean, how are we keeping my man? Mate, you know I'm always good when it's game day! <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting bored of saying, I need to find something else to say. I'm good, mate. I'm, I'm very well. How, how are you guys doing? You, you all okay? No, I'm buzzing, yeah, man. Good. Absolutely buzzing. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> Take it from there. Take it from there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, I'm absolutely buzzing. It's, a, it's, it's, it's always a good day when Spurs are on the box. That's for sure. I mean, it's what we live for, to be honest, as Spurs fans. But look, we'll see what Irish Hotspur Army we have in the building, and then we will. I'll tell everybody everything they need to know and we will crack on. George Hill is in the house. He says, big up to all you lads today. I'm buzzing today. Can't wait to smash the Saints. By the way, Jack, I'm Buffalo, born and raised. Hope your brother is keeping safe up in Ro uh, Rochester. Uh, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Harris Army. Come on, you Flat Cap Army. Big up, George Hill. Like I said, you know, I, I hope it's I hope it's not too cold for you guys up there because it's just a whole nother beast of a, of a climate and upstate. So hopefully you're keeping well, my man. It's good to have you part of the Harris Army, George. A lot of kind of New York State uh, kind of people now in the Harris Army, Dave. It's just growing by the day, uh, starting to build maybe a separate army in case we ever need, you know, to have an, an American expansion. It seems like it will start over in New York, but big yourself up, George. No, for sure. Big up, George, my man. I hope you're keeping well. I don't really know how to pronounce this name, but big yourself up, my man. Hope you're keeping well. Rooting, shooting, tooting, putin'. He's back. I absolutely love that name, my man. He says, hi, guys. Big up, lad. I hope you're keeping well. Oliver Freeman's in the house. Of course, we'll be travelling over with us Irish contingent on uh, on Sunday. Big up, Ollie. He says, hi, everyone. Hope all is good. We are all buzzing, my man. Can't wait for the game at the weekend. Steve Fraser's in the house. Come on, you Harris Army. Come on, you Spurs. Masterclass from Cutie and another brace from Harry. Saints will be falling from grace. Absolutely uh -huh. love that, Stevie. And look, Harry Kane loves goals against Southampton. I'll tell you why. And Lindstrom, big yourself up. Hi, when does this start? We're alive now. We are live now. I hope you're keeping well. Big yourself up. Um, who else have we got? We've got Michael um, Sobers. Big yourself up, Michael. I hope you're keeping well, lad. We have Alfie Gosling. Hi, lads. Hope all is well. We are going to win 3-1. Sun Kane and Kulu. I can feel it. I've got that feeling. Absolutely love it. Big up, Alfie, my man. We have Golden Cock Winter Olympic Spurs playing. Does it get any better? Of course it does. We got the Irish Hotspur pre-match bump up. Hashtag life is good. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Harris Army. Come Golden on, you Cock Army. Big yourself up and big up, Michael, my man. We have uh, Priam Tusif. Says hopefully Spurs win today. Uh, again, yeah, no, look, I, I'm fully confident we'll get that win, man. Not a bother, I think so. Look, man, uh, is in the house. He says, hi, everyone, big up. Hashtag leave you out. Big up, look, man. I hope you're keeping well, my man. We have Pete from the lane. He says, 2-0 Spurs win. Come on, you Spurs. Um, I look, I think it's going to be bigger than that, my man. I'll, get, I'll tell the people why in a few minutes. Welsh Carl says, big up, lads. Let's put smack down on the Saints tonight. 100% the Saints need to be turned to sinners tonight for sure, uh, Welsh Carl. But big yourself up. Uh, Stephen Trushton says, time to start winning these games in hand season starts tonight. That it does, my man, for sure. Um, William Pretty says, only the Dale, 
Only the Daily Mail. It says Gareth Bale has agreed terms to come to Spurs in the summer on a free. What do you think of it? Um, yeah, I mean, if it's a free, why not? He, he scored a couple of goals last year. I'm sure he'd definitely add something to the squad for one season, for sure, William. Um, quickly go around the house here on this one, uh, Jack. I mean, I, I, I take him on a free. Hopefully, he has some huge wage reduction of some court of some case. You know, where it's like maybe mm-hmm. half, if not maybe even more than that, of his wages. Maybe you know he uh, kind of you know just hostages himself or kid, kidnaps himself like Obama Yang did. You know, Dave, and just you know plants him outside the stadium. You know, of North London. So hopefully, he does something kind of similar, and then we just end up signing him. Yeah, that'd be nice. All right, for sure, Jacko. Um, uh, Sean, you know what, Bell? Yeah, I'll take him back, uh, like, like Jack says, on a on a reduced salary. But I don't think we need another forward man with what we have already. We probably overstocked in that department. So I probably wouldn't mind if he if he did come in, you know, saying goodbye to one of Bergie or uh, or Lucas Mora, uh, trying to get some money in to, to raise funds. If he could do a free free transfer in and get twenty five million on the way out for one of those players, then that makes a lot more sense to me. Yeah, yeah, spot on. And Philip Garrett Bell, would you have him back? Yeah, I would. Like, I mean, he scored 16 goals for us last season. Mm. That, that hasn't really been replaced, you know. OK, he'd have to come in on a much reduced salary. And bear in mind this, this could be very important in whether he comes or not. Wales have a qualifier for the World Cup coming up in March. If they qualify for the World Cup, he'll want to be match fit and ready to go. So that makes him, yeah. chances are he's going to sign for us, you know. But it has right, to be on a quarter of his wages. I mean, geez, he's on 600 grand a week or something at the moment, you know. It's crazy. But uh, yeah. if it's going to be his last season, what a way to go out, winning the championship with Spurs. Uh, that'd be absolutely unbelievable. So, uh, love your that. Man... Sorry, sorry, go on. No, I was just saying I love that. I love, I love that, that that prophecy. It's fantastic, Phil. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, Philip's the godfather, honestly. He makes you believe <laughs> Bjorn Wendell, uh, Wendell says, I have a good feeling for tonight's game. That usually, um, that's usually when we lose. <laughs> no, we, we're not losing today, my man. Justin Leung in the, is in the house. He says, come on, you Spurs. Peter KP says, big up the flat cap and Harris Army. Big boss man. Woo! Harris Army, stand <laughs> up. Flat caps, rise up. Big yourself big up. up, big boss man. The Amari Hotspurs in the house. Who Who is the hell is Michael uh, Sobers? I am Sobers. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Um, Nick says, big up heavy hitter panel. I want to see Hassan Hill cry again today. Yeah, 9-0, Nick. They're due one, aren't they? Big up, Nick, my man. Aiden Darty's in the house. Hi, lads. Big yourself up. Derek Cutchinson is in. Good afternoon, David, Jack, Philip, and Sean. It's game day. Come on, you Spurs. Rowan Coomer, it will be a war tonight. That yeah, I will, man. my man. Big yourself up. Fiona's in the house. Says United and West Ham are a mess. Let's march on to that top four. If you're like Kane, we'll uh, get goals tonight. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, he will. He it's loves goals against Southampton. I've got a cracking stat for you. Vince Vegas in the house. Come on, you Spurs. 10 nil to Spurs in the North. <laughs> Absolutely love that, my man. Big up in Spain. More, <laughs> deluded, more deluded than me and Sean. I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> yeah. Uber, Uber delusion. <laughs> Smasher says, yo, yo, playing chess tournament. The funny thing is that I get home five minutes before the game. Yeah, well, look, you know, make sure you win that chess tournament. And yeah, then come use, home the, and watch it. use the Antonio Conte defense, you know, in the chess tournament, you know, bombing knights. Uh, bombing rooks, you know, down the wings, uh, use, you know, some pawns, you know, in kind of the middle areas of the pitch. Uh, uh, big up the smasher, though. I love big it. Chess smasher. tournament. I love it. A lot of good big Norwegian up. chess players, actually. Fun fact. No, I didn't know that. I'll be honest with you. Chess isn't a game that, that I'm really, really into, to be honest with you. That, uh, I'm just not. Like, don't get me wrong. played as a kid in school when, you know, we had two during games hour or whatever. But, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan. Uh, the Crispy Cockrell says, hey, boys, come on, you Spurs. Big up the Crispy Cockrell. Hope you're keeping well. Crypto Pritch Gaming is in the house. Let's go, Harris Army. Lee goes, Leo Ghost Audits. Come on, you Spurs. Need a good win today. It's coming, my man. Trust me. Joseph, come on, you Spurs. Let's go, David, Jack, Sean, and the Godfather, and G, Philip, my man. Absolutely love that. Damianos, uh, come on, you Spurs. Big yourself up. Mark Burke says, as Spurs fans, we need to change our mentality. We have Antonio Conte. We are hard to beat. Little Southampton at home is no problem. That's what I'm mm. talking about. Big up, my man. Michelle Lewis is in the house. Come on, you Spurs. Let's smash the Saints today. We also have uh, Moza Coys. Sc- Some would score four. But look, you know, if you think that's where I bet, put your neck out there and say so. Harish Babu says, which formation you guys would like to see today? 3-4-3 or 3-5-2? Three, 
Um, I, I just quickly, I think it will be a three four three, my man. I think three four three. That's what yeah. we're gearing up to. Risky Void says we are linked with Vidal. What do you think of signing him? Uh, well, I don't know enough for the Premier League it. to be we'll honest, my man. It. Cody Max says hello, guys. Hope all is well. Got a sneaky feeling we're going to plow uh, those lot today. Kane and Son telepathy incoming. No, hundred percent. Look, we've seen what they've done to them before, Cody, and it's definitely going to happen again, my man. On your bike, Scott says, "Big up, lads. Four one tonight, boys. I'll be there, um, boys." And he wants bailing. Come on, you Spurs. Well, enjoy the game, Scotty boy. Make sure you sing for Harry Kane for me, lad. Scorpions fans for life says four one tonight. Kane Bray, Son one, and a Stevie one. Well, he also won after that horrificness against Brighton for sure, my man. And Kuva ninety nine is in the building. Says. Big up, everyone. Spurs winning this 5 nil easy. Saints oh. will be begging for mercy. <laughs> the almighty Harry would give them nothing but a size 13 boot and a hat trick. Honestly, Kuva, Kane and Son are going to absolutely rip their back four apart. I'm getting worried. I'm getting worried. This, this is all too think, positive. It's all too positive. Think Kane isn't angry after being robbed last time. You think Kane isn't being isn't angry after being robbed last time against him? You're sadly mistaken. He's gonna he's gonna put the world to rights tonight. Trust me, I can feel it. Mm. Big up, crew, my man. I hope you're keeping well, brother. And of course, everybody do get over and check out their fantastic channel, uh, Tottenham Tantrum Gold. And William McKenzie's in big the house. Up. Big up, William, uh, with the super chat as well. And he says, "Guys, big up, my man. I really do appreciate the support. You have no idea." He's barely I'm awake as well, Dave. He's barely awake. William McKenzie is. So, yeah, what <laughs> you time know, is he's... it over there, William? You mad man? What time is it over there? Oh, you, in the I, morning, isn't it? It's something I don't know. I, I don't know. It's ridiculous time. And anyway, usually, Three in the morning, usually don't sleep off that side of the world. But big up, William, my really man. Generous. I hope you're keeping well. I hope you're you're enjoying uh, life down there in New Zealand. Let me know how you're getting on in the chat, brother. Really we'll generous, William. Well, figure yourself up. But look, we are going to get into it. I'm going to tell everybody the, everything they need to know. Before I do, make sure you keep smashing that like button. Keep smashing that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. And feel free to get your super chats in and help support myself and Jack on our YouTube journey and to be able to take over the whole YouTube game. Uh, without that support, we don't have any um, um, big people behind us or anything like that to be able to back us. So we truly do rely on it. So I really, uh, if you can, no pro if you can, uh, you know, feel free to, but if you can't, no problem at all, guys, just get your comments into the comment section. We know it's a big, bad world out there and we will get them up. But everything you need to know, of course, we are at home at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Kickoff is at 7.45 p.m. Referee is David Coos. And in the VAR room, we have John Brooks. TV channel over in, in, in the USA. It's on USA Network, but I think it's um, NBC. I think the game is on over there. Uh, the Zone in the Canada and BT Sport 3 for everyone in the UK and Ireland. Um, everybody, make sure you get back here for the watch along at 7.30 p.m. tonight, where it be myself, Sean and Jack taking you all the way through the game and out the other side of it as well for a little discussion after. So feel free to join if you want to uh, if you want to tune back in for that. That is at 7 30. But guys, if you want the real delusional hour, the hour before the game, make sure you come over and join me on We Are Tottenham TV on the pre-match pump up starting at 6 15 p.m. So make sure you get over there and tune in for that. Um at Tottenham, of course, in the league, our last five. We have one three draw one and last one. Spurs have won each of their last five home games against the Saints in the Premier League, um, but no clean sheets in them last uh, five games. Um, so I wouldn't be if 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 I was having a bet today, it'd definitely be over two point five goals. Harry Kane has been directly involved in seventeen goals in thirteen Premier League starts for Spurs against Southampton. That's eleven scored with six assists, and has scored five goals in the last three home games against uh, Southampton. Kane has been involved in more goals against Southampton than any other player in Premier League history. And that's wow. why I tell everybody, Big H is going to shine on the biggest stage today. He mm. loves it. <laughs> but not only him, there will be Sonny, and I'll get into Sonny stats, but Spurs have won 7 out of 10 Premier League home games this season, drawn one and lost two. It's only the second time in the past 10 campaigns in the past 10 campaigns that they have claimed three points in seven of their first 10 home games after winning eight in 2016-17. Spurs have earned 21 points from a possible 30 in their first 10 league games under Antonio Conte. All six of the Premier League um, defeats this season have actually been in London, um, and they, they go back under Nuno. Uh, this, is the this is Tottenham's first Premier League home fixture since Boxing Day 
in in um, in the Premier League. Uh, we have won all six home league matches uh, this season against teams currently in the bottom half of the table. Um, so that's very interesting. Um, Sundar, here's one for the Sunny fans out there on why Sun will dominate today. Sun Young Min has been directly involved in 12 goals in 12 league games versus the Saints, scoring nine and setting up three. Sun can score in five consecutive Premier League home appearances for the second time um, after December 2017 to January 2018. So, you know, Sonny, I would, if I was a better man out there, I'd be putting my neck on the line. I'd be saying over 2.5 goals and Harry Kane and Son both to score tonight. Um, I do have stats on Southampton, but I'm not going to really read them because I'm going to save them for one of my questions. But they're not looking good for Southampton whatsoever. And plus, I don't like the Saints either, to be honest with you. Um, Tottenham, um, injury injury news here. Oliver Skip, of course, is out with his groin. Jaffa Tanganga is out with his knee. And Eric Dyer, as Conte said, will remain out with his tie injury. Uh, Brighton, they have a Lianco, I think he's a Brazilian, or Southampton, sorry. They have a Lianco out, the Brazilian defender. He's out with his hamstring. Nathan Teller is out with his groin. But their man up front, Armando Boria, um, he is to be assessed. So a late fitness test for this guy to see if he is going to be available or not. Uh, just a couple of super chats to get to, and then I'll start dishing out the questions to the boys. Brian C. Socrates in the house. Let's big up all the panel. Been looking forward to our lineup and formation on the Conte each week since he took over. It's a great time to be a Spurs fan. The power of momentum. Come on, you Spurs. Let's get the win tonight. No, look, I, I, I always look forward to uh, what Conte is going to do, especially now. That's that the crap is cleared out. You know, you know, you're only going to get players out there that are going to put in um, everything. You're not going to have to see changing in formations just to accommodate these guys and maybe what they were lacking as well. So I'm definitely looking forward to it, uh, Brian. But Jack, no, I mean the power of momentum is absolutely right, Brian. I feel like we win one game, you know, with Antonio Conte, you kind of get that taste in your mouth. You just want to play the next day and just, you know, smash the next ones. It feels like we get that kind of confident once Conte gives us those sort of three points or gives us that victory. I completely agree. It also feels like as well, I am looking forward to each game and what actually Conte's tactics, what he, which players he seems to like, uh, what sort of maybe, you know, thought process he has going up against each team. Whereas under Nuno, to be honest, I was not looking forward to it every week. I was probably just, you know, having nightmares more or less about like where he's going to be playing Deli Alley in the lineup and he's going to be playing left wing. Is he going to be playing center back? You know, things like that. Yeah. And it was a, it, it's, it's a much better time. Just like you're saying, Socrates, it's a much better time to be a Spurs fan and let's keep up the momentum. Big yourself up, my man. Nah, big up Socrates, man. He's absolutely pumped. I know it. He can't. Um, let me know if you're watching the game with the young lad today, my man. It'd be a good game for the young lad to be able to sit down and watch with you because we're going to absolutely rip them up, Brian. But big yourself up. Uh, Killian um, Gubin's in the house. He says, oh, just finally uh, gave this channel a donation. You deserve it, lads. Can you discuss whether Dottie would play or Emerson and why? Wow. Well, look, first of all, my man, I really do appreciate the, the uh, support. It's a massive help. You have no idea, brother, so thank you. Um, Doherty over Emerson. He really likes know. Doherty, by the way. He really likes Doherty, Dave. He, he's I'll tell not... you what, I'll get my question out for that just for you, Killian, because I actually do He really have likes that. Doherty, Killian does. He really I loves Doherty. Every, every game, he's in there backing his man no matter what, and I absolutely <laughs> love that. But look, I, I suppose I'll throw this one. We'll throw this one at um, um, Shawnee. Emerson's lack of end product was really highlighted last time out against Southampton when they just sat in their box. Um, but with a goal during the week, do you think that would give him the confidence boost he needed to be able to kick on at Tottenham? But also with the game coming up against Wolves at the weekend, do you think Emerson and Regulon both could be rested and you could see a change in the fullback positions in the wingback positions today with Doherty coming in, Sean? Oh, that's a spicy question with lots of little parts to it. I think that um, to answer it in 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 the order, I think that Emerson, he certainly should have more confidence. Uh, his performance against Brighton was, I thought, exemplary. I thought it shows the progress he's making. Um, I I would also I would I would posit though, like I always say, I think my my. Um, opinion of him when he goes forward is different when he's running onto balls and he has space to run into than it is when he has to try and beat a man against Brighton. He had a lot of space behind 
and uh, he, he went past a uh, cucumber or cucumber wasn't always uh, there to, you know, to, to try and challenge him to beat him. So um, against Southampton today, if Southampton sit back and defend like they did um, in the away fixture, then I think that Southampton, that, that, I'll be curious to see how Emerson deals with that because we haven't seen too much of him going past a man when the man's already in front of him. Mm. Um, so he did, he definitely improved, but we haven't seen him do what we want to see him do. And I think Southampton are, are going to sit back a lot today. So uh, I would personally still pick Emerson over Doherty. But if it's not working at half time and we're in a position, you know, whether it's 1 0, 2 0, or even if it's tight, I do think Doherty does offer a different option. Doherty is better at crossing the ball. And so that might become into play as the game goes on. And as far as resting, the, resting you know, either of them or, or one of them for the Wolves game, I think you've got to deal with each game as it comes. I think let's, let's just see what happens today. I wouldn't worry about Wolves. Like if you start thinking too far ahead, you can miss your dinner in front of you. And I think you need to. Let's get this. Start with Emerson today. See how he does. If he can make the necessary moves, if he can get past uh, who would it be? Who would be uh, Walker Peters? I think, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. If he can get past Walker Peters, then or Walker's Peter, then um, no, no, no reason to take him off. But I do think it's uh, an open question whether or not he can beat the man when they sit back, and we'll see what happens. Mm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And Philip as well. Would you with, with, with Doherty? I mean. Does he kind of have, you know, this last bit of the season to kind of save his, his Tottenham career? And does he have the ability to be able to, to prove all of us uh, wrong about him? Well, he came on uh, half-time against Leicester and did very well. Uh, I can see Emerson starting tonight, but if things aren't going the way they should be, I can see maybe Doherty coming on for him at half-time like he did. If that's going to be a, a tactic Conte is going to use, well, fair enough, you know. Uh, because yeah. after all, it was Doherty that made the equalising goal for um, for Bergwijn with that run forward. So, mm. you know, it, it's, it's it's I'd love to see. I think Emerson. I still think he should have been credited with that goal on on Sunday or Saturday, yeah. whenever it was. You know, the deflection was minimal. You know, it didn't deflect the, the flight of the ball. It just <laughs> have been a so I still think mm. he should have been given that. But you saw the way he celebrated. It was as if it was a monkey off his back. Yeah, straight yeah. over. And he's pumping his chest out. So I think, you know, you can't drop him after a performance like that. Start him tonight, yeah. see how it goes. Walker Peters is going to be a tricky opponent because he's done yeah. very well for Saints. Yeah. He's the fullback he probably should not have sold. Because he's, we'll get he's, on to him in a, I'll, I'll ask you about him in a few minutes, Philip, because oh, uh, I, I have a question on that. And, uh, but no, I, I, I'd, start with, I'd start with Emerson and if, hopefully, no, I don't want him us to have to make changes at half time because I hope we're so far out of sight at that stage. It doesn't really matter, you know. But bring Doherty on if needs be. No, for sure. For sure. Well, look, uh, uh, Kenny, let us know in the chat whether you agree or not, my man. But big yourself up, but I really do appreciate the support. Uh, Tottenham Tantrum Gold, uh, Dermot with the super sticker. Um, we'll see what, just give us one second, Dermot. It's we'll a just diamond. It's a big diamond, Dave. It's a, it's just kind of, it's just a diamond of a man, uh, really giving his, uh, support to big yourself up, Dermot. Really do appreciate it. Yeah. And as well, everybody head on over to Tottenham Tantrum Gold, especially, I'm not sure if they're doing a watch along as well, but they do watch along if you want to see what Dermot's doing, but Dermot just want to say, big yourself up, my man. Yeah. Big yourself up, Dermot. And of course we'll be having, uh, Kuva and Dermot back on as well tomorrow. Uh, so everybody uh, tune in for that as well. But big up, Dermot, my man. I hope you keep him well. Everyone do get over and check out Tottenham Tantrum Gold. And then Kev Williams says, hashtag Flat Cap Army. Absolutely love this channel. Come on, you Spurs. Look, my man, you know what? I really appreciate it. But look, I've been lucky. Of the community, uh, you guys out there that tune in, you're such such genuine, lovely people, you know. Um, of course, having Jack, Sean, Philip, uh, Dermot, Kuva, Ellie, and the list goes on and on of, of, of guests that come on as well and really help create this um, this channel and the community. So, you know, a massive props to all of them, uh, Kev. We really, really appreciate the kind words, brother. I really do, my man. Thank you very much. Um, but look, we, we're, we're going to get into it now. And um, we, we'll start with you, Jacko. Um, the side split um, the points at St. Mary's just over a month ago in a game where we actually dominated the match against a 10-man uh, Southampton. What are your thoughts ahead of today's game? Are you feeling confident we will get the win, Jack? I am feeling very confident, and I think it's more than that. I feel like a lot of us are feeling this sort of sneaky confidence, Dave, that you know mm. might be actually a bit of a thrashing here that we might give Southampton. Potentially, the reason why is because we probably a lot feel, especially the players as well as the fans, feel really frustrated by the, uh, the, the first time we came out against them. We got especially robbed 
uh, with Harry Kane's, you know, uh, offside sort of goal, as well as kind of the Doherty situation as well. I, I don't know. I, I think, Dave, it, it's a very frustrating kind of uh, performance that we had against Southampton. I do feel like we deserved a lot more. Hopefully the boys even recognize that as well. Um, but it also could be a different game just because maybe Southampton play very different with 11 men than they do with 10 men. Perhaps they'll actually come out of their shell a bit more with 11 men, whereas with 10 men, they did just kind of just, you know, kind of lock up shop and just park the whole bus and did very well at it and defended well. But perhaps with 10, 11 men, they'll be a bit more kind of naive, try to open themselves up a bit more and hopefully it'd be just a very different game than it was last time out uh, against Southampton, Dave. No, absolutely spot on, Jack. And no, look, the, the last time against Southampton, we 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 had the goals disallowed. You know, the Harry Kane one. It, 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 we we should have came out of there with a win. It was just, just just didn't take our chances on the day. You know, and just just kind of it, it, when we did create, we didn't we didn't take the chances. It was a tough one, Jacko. Mm. Um, but Shawnee, this I'll throw this one at you. Southampton have failed to keep a clean sheet in each of their last eleven Premier League matches. They have conceded two goals in each of their last six on the road as well. They have conceded multiple goals in 18 of their past 22 away league fixtures. Since the start of 2021, Southampton have conceded 57 away Premier League, um, 57 goals away in, um, in away Premier League games, 18 more than any other team. Their only victory in 13 attempts this season against the current top half side have come at West Ham on Boxing Day and have let in an unrivaled 198 Premier League goals since Ralph Hassan Hootel's first game as manager in December 2018. Could wow. we potentially be in for a big win here tonight? Maybe one of those famous <coughs> nine-nil drubbings that has happened in each of the last two seasons. I didn't you know like that, but... Stuff? Sorry? You like the stats, lad? Yeah, I mean, those stats were... <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> Too much to break down. I mean, obviously, if you look at if you look, so they're obviously a, ma a massively different team at home than they are away from home, right? And yeah. you know, but I, I am a little bit concerned with you know the, the the positivity in the you know from from everyone that's you know in the panel plus also everyone in the chat. But what I would say, right, that the the betting market doesn't usually get it wrong. And I've just I've just been looking on Betfair, and if you want a pre uh, like a, a predicted score line, they've got. You know, the odds on like 1-0, 2-0, 2-1, all, all of the kind of reasonable mm. scorelines that you'd expect. The lowest priced bet is what's called any other score. And that starts at 4-0, 4-0, 4-1, 4-2, 5-1, anything outside of that, anything anything that's more realistic, like a 1-0 or 2-0, all of that stuff is you can get better odds than you can. So the betting market is predicting a very high scoring game today. And obviously, they're putting it on Tottenham to do it. So, to answer your question, I had no idea about those stats. It sounds like Southampton are just a different different team away from home yeah. than they are at home. Yeah. Yeah. And the betting market is very, very, very rarely wrong. And so, if every if if Betfair and all of the uh, William Hills of the world think that the 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 chances are that Tottenham are going to score at least four, then it tells you something, right? So. Um, yeah, obviously on on that basis, I'm gonna I'm gonna join the join the parade and start calling out <laughs> <laughs> hat tricks all round. <laughs> Honestly, <coughs> I say Moon Dog's flying down to the bookies right now. He loves about Moon Dog. He's probably yeah. whizzing down there. So he is. Uh, you gotta love that, Johnny. Everybody, you know, if, uh, if there's, I say there's so many people straight on their phones trying to place a bet. They'll be all in here after the game. John, you owe me a fiver. <laughs> no, well, I, I mean, I'm just sitting there trying to figure out where's the, where's the value. And, you know, I wouldn't have thought, I've never seen it before where the most likely score is something that's unrealistic, like a 4-1 or a 5-1 or a 5-2. Yeah. So if that's what the market says, then, it, you know, I'm not going to argue with it. Let's let's go. Hat trick for hat, hat trick for Harry Kane. A couple for Sonny. Maybe even Serge Regulon's going to get on the score sheet. We'll see what happens. It's going to be a good day in a goal fest. Come on! Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> Look, me and Philip have had this theory for quite some time that some team is going to be on the end of an absolute spanking from us. And Philip, today I think we're going to get our day. But Philip is dropping points in games such as this one simply not an option if we want to remain in the driving seat for a top four place. No, we need to win tonight, tonight, and we need to win on Sunday, because yeah. like we've got the, with the Man United slipping up badly last night, and uh, West Ham winning by a whisker. Um, yeah. 
is you know is <laughs> I don't think anyone got that one. Um, uh, is going to be. Oh, you know, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Philip, that was poor. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, anyway, I've been rehearsing that one all day. Anyway, um, yeah, no. <laughs> Nothing but a win tonight is good enough. We have to win tonight and win well, you know, because as, as we keep saying, Arsenal are going nowhere. West Ham are treading water. Man United are in chaos. So it's yeah. up to us to push on tonight. So put the fear of God into them by winning tonight and winning well. Like, if it's going to be tonight or Sunday, I don't mind as long as when the big win comes, but it is coming soon. You know, somebody is going to really go, leave the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium shell-shocked one of these days. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. it's tonight. But if it's not tonight, it's Sunday. One of the two. More so tonight, I think. I think Wolves are a better team than Southampton. So the chances are it's probably going to be a better chance of scoring a few goals tonight because Wolves don't let many in. Southampton... Yeah. I've been proved do that lots in, so let's capitalize on that. Yeah, no, one hundred percent, lad, one hundred percent. Jordan Stevens says, "Aren't Southampton meant to lose nine 0 every season?" Ha ha. Maybe tonight. Yeah, it's tradition, lad. Once a season, has some hooter lights, a good spankings, and then he can clean house and start again. So you know, hopefully today is the day we deliver that. Uh, we, 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 it's about time we only show the pain that that us fans and them players have had. Over the last two years, just go out there today and absolutely unleash it on the Saints. Make them go to confession and confess all their sins. That's what I want to do. Moon Dog is in the building. He says, Moon Dog is in the house. He says, My bet will be on. Not the Eric Dyer bet. He won't be available today, my man. But Moon Dog, over 2.5 goals. Harry Kane and Son both to score. Put a fiver on it. I think it's going to happen, my man. But well, big up, Moondog. I knew he'd be here. As soon as you mentioned a bet, he's boom, straight in. Here I am. You gotta love it. Big up, I love Moondog. Him. I love him. Yeah. Oh, he's on the same cloth, me and him. I love it. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant. Jack, Spurs have taken 13 points from a possible 15 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium since Conte took charge and have also found the back of the net at least twice on each occasion. Are we starting to create a scenario where teams are already turning up pessimistic in their mentality and are already defeated before they get on the bus. Hmm. I feel like we're just a different sort of animal, you know, at home, Dave. It does feel like, you know, we start out faster at home. feels like teams have been super deflated against us. We've had a lot of sort of these performances, Dave, that I've kind of have said have been kind of easy performances from the moment the ball was kicked. You just kind of only knew one team was going to win it, and it was going to be Tottenham Hotspur. It felt that way with Crystal Palace. Sort of felt that way with Brentford, I would probably say as well. Brentford felt pretty comfortable uh, felt, felt that way, of course, with obviously the recent fixture with Brighton. I don't know, Dave. I think it is kind of the case that actually we do kind of maybe just intimidate teams uh, where we pretty much just make it almost unlivable for most teams to even come up against us at home. Even Liverpool found it really tough to get into their sort of groove against us at home. So I don't know, Dave. I feel like maybe a lot of teams do kind of walk off uh, the bus pretty defeated coming up against us. No, I, I definitely, I, I definitely think they're, they're they're starting to get that feeling anyway, for sure, Jack. I mean, just a lot of comfortable that. performances, like from the get go, like ones mm -hmm. where Dave, you and I are almost like talking about what we're going to be doing after the game, you know, kind of performances, <laughs> like, and it's nice to have those. Those are probably the best kind of uh, wins, to be honest. So. I don't know, Dave. I think maybe you could be onto something. Perhaps maybe a lot of teams have kind of shown up to the stadium already defeated before the game even started. No, absolutely love that. And Jack, Jason Grove also said, by the way, big up, Jason. It's a long time no see. I hope you're keeping well. I absolutely love your voice when I hear you on shows, man. Absolutely love it. Jason Grove says, I agree. These are the games we need to be winning. What time will uh, the new players be subbed on? 60th minute, I could see Kulisevsky. I could see Kulisevsky coming on in like the 60th minute. Benton Core, I don't think will be starting, unfortunately. I want him to start, but I don't think he will be. I think it will be Harry Winks. Harry Winks will be taken off maybe 65th, 70th minute for Benton Core. Uh, and then perhaps, you know, let's say we're up 3 0, 4 0. Harry Kane gets taken off for like a Stevie Bergvine or something like that. But there you are. That Those are my subs, Jason. Those are my subs. Uh, look, for me, Jason, Benton Core starts. Kulu. I reckon around 65 minutes, 60 minutes, you'll see Kulu on, uh, Jason. But big yourself up, my man. It is good to see you back in the house, Mr. Groves. I hope you are keeping well, my man. 
Uh, absolutely love it. Good to see you in jail. Uh, Sean, is our home now a fortress? In, or actually, we'll go to Philip with this because he, he was speaking about this already. Philip, is our is our home now a fortress and guaranteed points? And is Conte slowly starting to build us back up to where we were under Pochettino? Well, I mean, the last season at White Hart Lane, we our record was 17 wins and two draws. That's that's okay. That's going to be very hard to replicate, you know. But we've got to aim at that. I would like to see us go the rest of the season unbeaten at home. Okay, yeah. we might drop the odd point, but I think we, we've enough. We've we, who, who's played at the stadium? We've we had Man City have been there, Liverpool have been there, Man United have been there. Yeah, it's just we Arsenal have, left. I think there's a, yeah, a there's big four. crowd up the road. Yeah. They're, they're the only ones that have to come if they if they can actually you know get enough courage to come and play us. They haven't shown too much. Of that. <laughs> uh, I think we can beat them because I mean, let's face it, they don't have any. They got rid of half their half their squad, and um, no, I can see us going pretty much unbeaten the rest of the season at home. Okay, there's always going to be a game that's gonna. We're going to say we're going to win three or four nil, and we're going to get turned over. That's football, but it's not going to happen too often, and we're going to get enough to actually get uh, into the um, Champions League next season. That's my prediction. Yeah. Wow, oh, I absolutely love that. Philip love coming it. with the absolute jokes today as well. I love it. I love it, Philip. Um, Shawnee, my man, Spurs earned 21 points from a possible 30 in the first 10 league games under... Uh, oh, no, sorry. That's uh, Yeah, actually, sorry. Spurs have earned <laughs> 21 points from a possible 30 in the first 10 league games under Antonio Conte. Are you happy with that return? And is it top four four? Yeah, so the, the, the only drop points were uh, Everton away, Chelsea at home, and then Southampton away. That's it, right? Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, and there's two, and then two more from who, who else did we draw to? Southampton, Everton, um, Chelsea away, and uh, oh, sorry, Chelsea at home, I mean. I forget who the other two were. But yeah, listen. I mean, you know, the uh, the Southampton game was was frustrating. The Everton game was brand new. Like we were on the back of like there wasn't that you couldn't you can't blame Conte for that one. Really, it was just getting started, and it was a very dull and frustrating game. But generally, I think the performances are getting more and more uh, consistent, better and better. We also had to go through a large period of those ten games without arguably two of our top three players in the team. If you take out Hugo Lloris, we didn't have Sonny for most of it. We didn't have Romero. They're now back. We've got rid of the dross. We've got a couple of new players in, which I think at least one or one of them, if not both of them, we will find that within two or three months will be considered within the top four or five players within our team. So I'm, I think it's more than reasonable for his first ten games. Far better than what you know. Far more. I think everybody is far more confident than where we were before him under Nuno or under Mourinho. It's progress. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. There's still going to be slip ups. But um, I'd actually expect him to get more. I think he'll beat those twenty-one that twenty-one point total in the next ten games, starting today. As long as we stay injury-free, then there's no reason why we can't go on a, the mother of all runs into the end of the season. Oh, I love it. Honestly, you guys, you guys got to stop there. You know, <laughs> in this top four all the time. You're, you're going to outrage some 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 fans in the fan base by doing that. Uh, you gotta love it. You gotta. Well, love I, it. I don't. I don't see us losing. To, I don't know who else we've. Like we've, the only the tough the tough tough games. The games on paper. You have got Manchester City away. You have got Man United away. But I think we you know Man United were far better than the Man United we see today when we smashed them five one last season. So. I don't think that's a problem. Arsenal at home, forget about it. It's only Man City. If we can get a draw out of the Man City game in, in three weeks' time, then I don't see us losing for the rest of the season. Yeah, we're probably home and horse. Yeah, you're probably right, actually. Uh, I agree with that. I agree with that. I know there's many that wouldn't. There. Do you know what it is? People are saying, calm down, lads, until we no, get... I know. Get well, I was saying that at the start, but now I'm like caught up in it. So. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Jacko, Southampton were unbelievable defensively last time out when they went uh, to 10 men. If they keep all 11 on the pitch, do you see them coming out of their shell more? Or do you see this being a very different game compared to our last meeting with them? 
I do see this being a very different game, not only because of what we've been describing about how much, how different we play at home. It feels mm-hmm. like we're just a whole different sort of team at home. I think we already dis- discussed that, but it does feel like Southampton, the moment they went to 10 men, their whole sort of philosophy, their, ho- their whole so- sort of style of play and everything just completely changed. I mean, Dave, let's be honest. I do believe, if I remember correctly, that first 20 minutes of that mm-hmm. game for Southampton, they were all over us. I do believe they were like making it really difficult for us to get out of our own half when we were in their stadium in the first 20 minutes. But then when they went down to 10 men, it just made it a wholly different game. And then we had to kind of take the initiative to them. So I see them kind of doing a version of that perhaps in this game. I know we'll be at home, so maybe they won't exactly try to swarm us and pressure us as much. But with Ralph Hudel, he will try to do it. It is still part of his sort of kind of philosophy to maybe bring that sort of heat, that sort of pressure, and especially the beginning of matches. I expect it to be a very different game, Dave, especially if they keep 11 men on the pitch this time. Uh, yeah. Maybe it actually might be easier for us if they keep 11 men on the pitch this time. Uh, who knows? But I, I, I just expect Southampton to be playing very, very differently uh, this time around to last time out. So if they do keep 11 on the field, Jack, do you think maybe that they might they might be a bit more expansive, which actually might suit our game? It might actually leave gaps open for us to play in rather than them sitting 10 men on the box. Well, recently, Dave, they've even been kind of deploying more of that 3-4-3 or kind of 3-5-2 kind of formations because they've been coming up against a lot of teams that kind of have a five in the back and a three in the back. Hassan Hoodle back in the day kind of used to use the three in the back and the five in the back uh, with uh, Southampton. Most of the time he uses like a 4-4-2 of some sorts. And recently he's been kind of switching it up and going for maybe more kind of flying bombing wingbacks, which... Who knows, Dave? I feel like perhaps as we broke down with stats with Jack with this on, mm-hmm. we could actually kind of expose them. And what's actually funny, Dave, even Southampton, it's almost like they're defensively solid from the front, but not in the back. When you actually look at their back line, their back line makes a lot of mistakes. Their back line can get really exposed because of how high up they press. But the front line actually defends pretty well. They have really hardworking uh, attackers that do make it really difficult for our defenders to progress the ball. But funny enough, I feel like their their defenders are kind of actually the weaker link in the defense, funny enough. So uh, it will be an interesting game, Dave, especially if Hassan Hoodle tries to take the game to us, try to take the initiative to us. I do expect us to maybe have a few breakaways, a few different counterattacks, and it just be a very different game than last time. No, I, look, I, I, I definitely think so. I think, I think you're, I think you're spot on, Jack. I, I do think that you know they'd, they'd probably be out of their shells a little bit more. Um, they'd probably feel like they can get something from this, you know. And um, the gaps will be there open, and we just need Kane and Son to hit the target when they do get the opportunities and uh, mm. absolutely bury them. Um, DG says this, this better last until match time. I've been put up <laughs> all week since we made Brighton look silly. My man ah. look, will be ending this off at six o'clock, um, but then I'll be over on We Are Tottenham TV from quarter past six to quarter past seven, and then we'll be back here from half seven. But look, DG, what I will do is we'll end it at six. You can go and have your dinner, and then, you know, come back to us with a nice full stomach, and let's celebrate uh, beating the Saints together, my man. But big up, DG. And look, I've been put all week as well. Look, you know, everyone was talking about Graham Potter and Brighton. Look, he's just a poor man's Gareth Southgate. Pep, Pep, um, Paul and Pep Guardiola, and the only thing Brighton is is famous for is is the seaside and the sticker rocks and the fish and chips, not the football club. We absolutely destroyed them, and we're now going down to the south, and we're now going down to uh, we're now inviting Southampton up to the capital to beat them and send them back down to where they belong on the coast as well. But big up, DG, my man, I really do appreciate the support. Everyone has feel free to get your support in, just like DG. What a man, big yourself up, brother. Um, um, Philip Tottenham were, were particularly uh, impressive in the first half against the Seagulls. Should we start like this again, and should this be a common theme to expect at home? Yeah, been saying that we've been saying that for weeks. Mm. Uh, nothing I hate more than seeing Spurs start a match with 15 passes across the back line in the first <laughs> two minutes, and that's happened under yeah. Nuno. That was the way we started matches. And I think what we need to do now is get the, get. I'm a, I, this thing about passing the ball back from the kickoff. I think we should, we should be passing it forward. Never mind going back. Get at them straight away in their face from the first minute. Don't allow them to settle. Don't allow them to get the feel for the game. Um, we we we're at home. The onus is on us to go after them. And I think we will tonight. I think we saw what could happen when when we we did it on Saturday. And uh, I think it's probably um, Conte's way now. 
that not to let the other team get a grip on matches or not to allow us not don't let them dictate the pace of the game let's we set the pace and if they can live with it all well and good but i don't think they will mm. no for sure and it's it's like you said it's in the home games it's definitely up to us to, to set their tempo on the pace because southampton do look to start quick they do look to try and get that early goal to yeah. to hold on to so it is it's very important that we don't allow them to settle into their game and that we get at them first, just like we did with Brighton. We didn't allow them to set up. They're absolutely spot on there, there my man, Philip. Absolutely spot on. Um, um, Shawnee, on the previous managers, we have failed to start quickly and settle into a routine in the first half of games. What has Conte done differently that he has managed to turn this around? And it looks like the players are up from the games from minute one. Um. If I'm honest, mate, I, I I think I'm gonna take Phil's point here and 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 kind of run with it. Like Work moving, away. playing for play, playing the ball forward uh, is such a a key and crucial thing. And until we until recently, we have players that are you know lacking confidence with the ability to do that. A lot of people would rather you know whether they're worrying about their stats on passes completed or whether they just don't have the confidence to move it forward and they would just rather put it off to somebody else to do the job. Mm -hmm. But like you know, we saw against Brighton, Romero. Like, get the ball, calm down, everybody. Just calm down. You know, Cootie, Uncle Cootie's got this one, right? And he'll just he'll just slow the ball down, <laughs> play it forward, and create something and allow and allow Tottenham then allow the midfielders, allow Harry Kane to have more time. Confidence breeds confidence. And I think against Brighton especially was the first time we really saw our start. Maybe uh, start fast, maybe against Brighton, we had the same kind of <laughs> the same kind of thing, but I think against Leicester, sorry, uh, yeah, sorry, against Leicester, against Leicester, you know, it, it can't be overlooked how poor Leicester were in the first half, especially in the first 20 minutes. Against Brighton, uh, we just overran them. And I think it's, I think it's more to do with the players coming back. Obviously, Conte said something, or, or, uh, who knows what he said or how he's done it. But for me, I think that it's a case of when we get the ball at the back, if you start passing, let pa start passing sideways then it, it slows everything down. It's like it's like running in the mud. It's difficult. It's boring. And it and it kind of just sucks the life out of the out of the move. Whereas mm. under this new look Tottenham, we're energetic because the ball is zipped forward fast, early, accurately, and then it allows our more creative midfielders to be able to run, move with it. And then if you do that in the first two or three minutes, if you get a move happening in the first two, three, four, five minutes, or if you get a couple of them going, then it, it gets the crowd excited and, it, and the energy just feeds off itself. So I don't know if it's anything that he's d deliberately done or said or asked, but it just looks like it's more about positivity that comes from the back that gets the thing going. And as I say, from there, everything can just kind of, it's a vicious circle that goes positively rather than negatively, if that makes sense. No, yeah. it yeah. completely makes sense. To be fair, makes though, sense. I would say like Dave, I mean, maybe just because he is in the comments here, but Jose Mourinho, we did actually score lots of times in the first 20 minutes of games, the first 15 minutes mm. of games. And we were scoring so much in those in the first kind of quarters of games that we actually have Spurs fans started to get worried because that meant we kind of sat off for the rest of the game because we would score so early in the game. So we, we actually were almost happy sometimes when we went into it nil nil at halftime because that meant that Jose wouldn't sit back in the second half. So I don't know, Dave. I mean, I think at least in Conte's case, I think there are two different managers who you could say, you know, definitely emphasize starting fast, starting early, getting that goal right in the first 20 to 30 minutes in order to kind of set the tone for the match and in order to kind of carry a bit of momentum. It feels like with Conte's team, we're a bit better solid defensively and we seem to carry the momentum of the goal a bit more than we did under Jose. But just to be fair to Jose, I do remember us scoring lots of times in the first 20 minutes. Mm. Yeah, no, 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 that, no, you, you, we, we did, we did score a few goals. Um, we did score a lot of times, uh, you know, under Jose, but you know, there was also a lot of games where we conceded, um, um, under Jose and even Fair. under Nuno, um, um and yeah. very early on as well. Uh, but it, it is, it is, it, it's a good job that Conte seems to have that sorted out because too many games have we been seen, uh, you know, our players standing there, you know, taking yeah. their time, doing everything too slow, not getting off to a good start, and ultimately putting us on the back foot from 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 more or less minute one. So it is good to see that that is uh, completely turned around. So big up Antonio Conte for that. But Jack, we'll stick with you, my man. Romero did come off with clamp against Brighton. Are you concerned he might be rested today or do you expect him to start? 
no, I expect him to start, Dave. He even himself kind of, you know, said it was just yeah. a cramp, kind of similar to, well, then again, though, then again, if I were to be skeptical, Dave, that one time when um, Reggion had that injury and he told everybody, like, no, keep me for your lineups, keep me for your fantasy teams, everybody, don't drop me, I'm actually fine. He ended up not really being that, you know, he ended up actually missing a few games from it. So I don't know whether to trust Romero. It feels like he was fine. It felt like, you know, he he was perfectly OK. Uh, so hopefully he will start this one, especially in the middle of the back three, Dave. He was unbelievable. He was immense. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure he was. Uh, Killian, look, I can get what you're saying, but um, he actually has, uh, I think he actually has, the, um, what is it? Is, is it the most or the second most assist this season in the Premier League for Tottenham? Uh, um, regular? Um, I think he has, uh, I think he has maybe. He's up there with three or four anyway. I think he has some of the most assists. And at one stage, he had the most goal creating actions in our entire team. In fact, mm-hmm. some of the most goal creating actions, I think, still in our entire team. But Killian, we will be getting on to Regulon because I actually think um, he, 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 um, he goes very under under the radar. I, I, I do think that. But um, Sean, Romero's return to the team was a major boost defensively for us. And he was absolutely outstanding. Probably the best player on the pitch. Do we have one of the world's best defenders on our hands here? Yeah, I mean, um, I personally think that, you know, he's obviously just back from injury. So time will tell. God forbid he doesn't become injury prone mm. and, and someone, you know, this was a one off and hopefully there's, there's, I don't think he had much, much of an injury uh, history in his uh, previous life, but I, um, I do think we've got someone that could easily be up there with Virgil van Dyke in, you know, by, by next season. He's, he's, he's definitely in the top five already in the premier league, in my opinion. And, but you know, like I say, it's it's one game back from a three month out, you know, um, or two and a half month injury, and before then, it was brand new to the league. He he took a few games to settle in. Whilst I love everything about him, there, like you know, it's you have to remember that he also did get caught out of position and slipped for the for the chance when um, when Mope ended up dinking it to Hugo Lloris. So there's definitely not a per- it's not a perfect player by any stretch of the imagination, but. I think he more than just his positional awareness, more than just his calming influence. I think he, he he breeds confidence through the other players around him. People like Sanchez are going to need to have someone like him next door who can calm him down. Because you know we saw Conte's comments about Sanchez this week. He could be a top top centre back. He just needs to keep his concentration for ninety minutes. And I think over time, someone like Romero will will rub off on him. I think he'll rub off on Ben Davies. And so, in essence, you know, Virgil van Dijk is a monster amongst a great back three for Liverpool. Christian Romero at the moment looks like a monster amongst a good back three, but not a great back three. And so, whilst we have the three that we do or with, with Eric Dyer coming back, I think that his, his, his abilities are... The best part of his ability isn't just all the things that he can do. It's also what I think he, people will feed off of him. And so, for those reasons, I do think we have potentially a top... A, t- a world, well, definitely a world class defender, but whether or not he can make, you know, top two or three centre backs in the league, I think time will tell. But I'm pretty hopeful that that will be the case. No, and uh, look, look, do you know what? Me personally, I think I think he'll be a much better defender at Van Dyke's age, at Van Dyke's age, than what he is now. Than what? Um, oh, that's true. Good what, point. I believe yeah. he will be better. But um, Sean, on yeah. TV said they'll have no Romero slander off you. They don't want to even hear you talk about him slipping. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry, Ben. I do apologise, but <laughs> well, it's not slander. Slander is slander. Technically, slander is something that you've said about someone that's not true. He did slip, <laughs> and so I'm sorry, Ben. On this one, I, I think you'll find you need to recorrect your uh, your <laughs> your libel. <laughs> on that slip, though, I, do you know what, Shawnee? On that slip, though, I more do blame. It kind of does show that the people behind, like you know, either side of him can't cover. How many times did we see him covering for them? He makes one slip, you know, one sort of error. Well, it's not even an error. No, no, no it's, a, it's slip, okay. But, I, you know, the defenders behind him can't cover for him. I get it. I get it. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not chastising him for it. I'm just yeah, pointing yeah, it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. He, he put in an absolute, absolute shift. He smashed into their best player, Lamptey, or one of their best players, Lamptey, and Lamptey was never the same. That was ten minutes in. Lamptey hobbled away from that challenge. Didn't even, mm-hmm. didn't even cause the foul. And then Lamptey was basically, you know, in uh, in Reggie's pocket for the rest of the game, right? And I think that was in no small part because of the the Romero challenge. And so I think that Romero had an absolute worldie, but mm-hmm. 
the only reason I point it out is because if we're, if we're giving the guy plaudits yeah, yeah, of yeah. is he yeah. is he is he world world level? Well, world level don't make those sorts of mistakes too often, so hopefully he won't make that again. No. Ben, let me know if you agree with it. Let me know if you agree with it. <laughs> Big up, Big up, Love you, man. Ben. Cheers, but look, ben. if this channel is good enough for We Are Tottenham TV, then it's good enough for you too. And that's a reason why you should be subscribing to the Irish Hotspur. Plus, I hope everybody did enjoy the the, um, the collaboration of the podcast, That Tottenham Hour. Myself, uh, We Are Tottenham TV and Matty Hayes. Hope everyone did enjoy it. And it will be once a week as well. And once I'm finished here, follow me over to We Are Tottenham TV at 6.15 for the other pre-match pump up. But everybody, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you obliterate that subscribe button. And feel free to get your super chats in and help support myself and Jack on the journey. It's a great way to get questions in for the panel as well. And it always leads to good talking points. And DG says... What's a good nickname for Benton Core? Kulu is easy. Um, look, we I think uh, Spurs related came up with um, um, or was it Spurs related came up with Dem Benton Core or Dem no, Ben Ben Core? Yeah, Dem Ben Core. Yeah, Core. Um, <laughs> someone else came up with Ben Teckers. Um, yeah, Ben Teckers. Yeah. Sat there that day. I like Ben Teckers. Um, I call him the Uruguayan Dembele. Any other nicknames here on the panel, guys? <coughs> um. Ooh. There's a like bento a bento box. box. You could do like bento <laughs> sauce. You could do like yeah, bento yeah. sauce, or you know, bento. I don't. I'm not sure, but Ben Tackers, I do like. I do like Ben Tackers. Uh, the big up DJ. There you are, DG. My man. There you are. There, there, there's nicknames we have for you. Let me know yours, brother. And Moon Dog says I got Sanchez first score twenty five to one. Get in there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait, you know, Dog, wait, love it. Do it. Stuff Love it, Moon Dog. Yeah, it's in there as well. I absolutely. I told you, Harry Kane and Son to score an over 2.5 goals, Moon Dog. What are you doing? You got to take that fiver off and shift it to the bet. I told yeah. you, my man. Sanchez, yeah. look, if it happens, though, I'll, I'll happily I'll happily apologize and I'll be delighted for you, my man. But big up, Moon Dog. Absolutely love that. Oh, that's right, Dave. Lolo is his nickname. Lolo is his nickname for Rodrigo. Um, his nickname, I think, is Lolo. That's right. He actually does have a nickname. But Sanchez, absolute massive, massive man in the air sometimes, Moondog. So not a bad, I would say, of all the center backs to score, it will be Sanchez. It will be Sanchez. And I actually love that. Love that he bets on the center backs uh, to score. Nothing better than a center back to open it up. No, he absolutely loves it. He absolutely loves it. So he does. But uh, uh, big up, Moondog, my man. Really appreciate the support. Philip, this one goes to you because uh, we were talking about Kyle Walker Peters. Kyle Walker Peters, um, he helped the Saints uh, um, get over the line in the 112th minute versus commentary in the FA Cup. And uh, Walker Peters was also on target once um, before that, before the break, um, where he scored against Man City. And he's having a good season, although most of the time at left back, because Livermento is the one that actually plays mm -hmm. down the right. Um, but would you take him back um, to, to Tottenham, Philip, to compete with Emerson? Yeah, just before I answer that, can I just put one little addendum onto the talk about um, Romero? Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, work with. Yeah. I just noticed now we're taking up the option to buy him in the summer, right? Four months ahead of the time we had to take it up. That speaks volumes. <laughs> Rather than yeah. waiting for the last game of the season, we're taking it up now. Yeah. He was the best defender in Serie A last season. He's 23 years of age. He is going to make Virgin van Dijk look like an amateur by the time he's finished. That's my yeah. reckoning. I, I, I forgot how young he was when I, when I was giving my kind of comparisons. I forgot he's only 23. You know, you know he's, he's, he's going to be insane. Okay. Yeah. He does have the, I, I don't want to incur the wrath of Ben and Sim, but he does make the, <laughs> you know, uh, but I mean, let, let's face it. What player doesn't make a slip now and again, you know? So it's just, yeah. let, let's hope he makes him in non-threatening situations in, in, the, in the future, you know? But yeah, no, 100%. he's absolutely, absolutely one of the best buys we will make in the last 10 years yeah. is, is Romero, you know? Anyway, Kyle Walker-Peters. Um, I know uh, my normal mantra for something like this is I'd say never go back. Now, there's been exceptions to that. Klinsman coming back, Bale coming back. Kyle Walker-Peters, we sold him at a time where we thought we probably had surplus of right back, so we didn't – or he, somebody thought he wasn't going to make the grade. He's gone to a team where the pressure wouldn't be quite as intense on him to make the grade, and he's done very well. Fair dues to him. Good little player, but no, I wouldn't have him back. Yeah. Mm, interesting, interesting. Um, 
you know, maybe quick any of you to take us on that. Jack Shawnee, would you take him back? Yeah, no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't take him back. I, I, he's left wing back, isn't he? So I don't think we need yeah, him. I, I think we got Regulon's good enough for me. Well, he's I like right Regulon. Footed. He he's kind of doing like what Joao Cancelo does, where you know he plays as like an inverted wing inverted. back because yeah. he's that. To be fair, actually, to him because he is actually that good uh, that he can actually play. You know, the the left wing back actually quite well. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I still think. I mean, if he's if he's capable of doing both sides, although I thought that Sessegnon did really well at left wing back when he played against Liverpool, and I thought he did really well when he played against uh, played in the right wing back as an inverted right wing back against um, who who was it Chelsea? Who he did that against? I forget now. He came. He recently he played in the right wing back slot. Uh, right in the right wing back slot. I don't know. I think left wing back slot. I think we're good. I think Ses if Sessegnon can stay injury free, I think we have a real player there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, yeah, I'm not that bothered about Walker Peters myself. Jack? Uh, I, I think there's better out there, but I, I respect Kyle Walker Peters. I actually have a, a profound respect for him. I think he is a really good player and he's settled in well to Southampton and has made the most of that sort of transfer where we offloaded him, kind of thought we were getting rid of a player we didn't need, kind of maybe proved us a bit wrong that maybe he did kind of, you know, have a chance uh, to play for us. So big up to Kyle Walker Peters, but... I wouldn't take him back just because I feel like there is better out there. But actually, for English homegrown, maybe a better option than someone like Atari Glampity, actually, when you do think about it. Because mm. it would probably cost like 30 million less. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That That, that is true. How old is he um, now? Probably 25, 24, 25. 24, 25, I think. Faz Rathfar, David, any nicknames uh, like Shoe Shiner for Ragnik? Yeah, Wreck It Ralph, lad. You know, he goes in there, he absolutely wrecks it, and then he'd be gone in the summer. So, Wreck It Ralph is, is, is the nickname for him, uh, my man. And Philip We Are Tottenham TV says, uh, Let me remind you, uh, we did the same with the Celso. <laughs> uh, big up, We Are Tottenham TV. Big yourself up. Um, 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 Jack, with the game mm. at the weekend, tonight's game, and another game on Sunday against Wolves, we're. Um, Will our wing backs will, um, where our wing backs will be crucial against Wolves? Do you think Conte um, will rest Regulon, or do you expect him to retain his place? And how fantastic has he been this season? For me, he actually does a lot of unselfish running and goes under the radar in terms of praise. Hmm, great question, Dave. I feel like you do rest him for this one. I think you do, to be honest, because this is at home against Southampton, Sassignon maybe offers that sort of defensive sort of solidity. He's not uh, at all. I really love Sassignon as a backup to Reguilón. I would play Sassignon and probably play Emerson maybe again for this one, perhaps play Doherty, you know, against Wolves, against, you know, his former teammates, see if he actually, you know, rises up for that occasion. Uh, but I would actually rest Reguilón for this one uh, just because, like, maybe to the second part of the question, Dave, he has been unbelievable for us this season. I mean, for a long stage in time, he was our assist leader for a huge amount of time. He was actually leading in interceptions in our entire squad as well uh, by, like, some country mile. I, be I believe for, like, the first, like, quarter of the season, everybody he had the most interceptions in our entire squad. He had some of the most uh, goal-creating actions in our entire squad. Even this season, Dave, in the entire Premier League, there's no fullback that puts more crosses into the box than he does. Mm. Um, he's some of the best, uh, I think, in like covering distance. I think him and Emerson, we sometimes forget how much distance these guys actually cover. Sprinting up and down the touchline, it's pretty spectacular. You have to be in unbelievable shape to be a wingback in Conte's system. He makes really intelligent runs that I feel like Emerson really doesn't. And he makes runs that Harry Kane will find. I feel like Harry Kane loves, you know, using Reguilón. Reguilón, he's yeah. been an animal for us this season. He's also a huge, you know, team kind of a uh, presence. You know, he seems to really mm -hmm. get along with everybody. He seems to be that kind of character in the dressing room, Dave, that a lot of people seem to be friends with, that kind of depend on, that, you know, people can, you know, kind of put their shoulder on. I don't know, Dave. I love Sergi Reguilón. I hope we keep him forever. He's been spectacular this season. He's been a lot better than he was last season. I thought last mm -hmm. season, his debut season, he was perfectly fine, if not actually better than average, considering how bad last season was. I think he's coming into his own, and he's proving to be one of the best fullbacks in the Premier League. Yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. I think he does an off, awful lot of unselfish runs. He's one of them players who's just dependable. He makes really intelligent runs, though. I think that's what Very intelligent well. runs. A lot of unselfish runs, especially on the outside. But he's dependable, Jack. You know, if you have the ball, you know you go out to the left-hand side, he's out there. But also, you know, he will also bust the gut to get back and help right. out defensively. 
so so dependable. Um, I, I really do like this guy. I think he's just got under the radar recently in terms of praise and stuff like that. Uh, but look, moving on to the midfield, and we'll start with Shawnee. With Skip being out and Wink starting the last five games, although not having the best of games last time out, do you think Conte is willing to put Bentoncourt into the lineup right away? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean... Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. I think that Winks's time. I'm going to make a make a speculative argument here. I think Winks's yeah. time is coming to an end as a starter for Tottenham. I mm. think you know we had this conversation before. I think it was before the last game against Brighton, whether Hoybo is going to have an absolute monster because he's looking over his shoulder and thinking Bentancur is coming to take his space. From what I saw, albeit it was 16 minutes. From what I saw in that 16 minutes, I think that you know Bentancur looks like. As we've already spoken, he could be a replacement for Dembele. Mm. And I think the the number one, while Skippy's out injured, Harry Winks gets a reprieve. But when Skippy's back, I think that, that Harry Winks probably drops down to a fourth choice central midfielder for Tottenham. And so, um, as far as today goes, I mean, I don't, I, I, the, the only reason I think that he might not put, pen, put, put Benton Core in into a 3-4-3 three, three, is if he thinks that he's just not ready or not fit enough for any reason. Um, based on form alone, mm. Benson Core for me, Hoiberg for me all day long as the two holding midfielders in a three-four-three, and then you pick the you know the state that everything else is as it was. So, um, yeah, like I say, I think that Harry Winks needs to be very concerned with him. I think he needs to up his game. If he does play today, he needs to put in an absolute worldie in. Otherwise, yeah. against Wolves, he won't be in the starting eleven. And I, and I think once he loses his place, it will mm. be very difficult for him to get it back. Let me ask you, Sean, do you think Harry Winks can cope with the pressure um, that, that Ben Tecor is putting on him for his position? Can he cope with that and rise to the occasion? No, I, I'm not I'm not a Harry Winks fan. I never have been. Yeah, yeah. Um, look, he's, he's so you see him in training videos, you see him in YouTube videos when he's like knocking about on the on the on you know a hotspur way. The guy's mm. got supreme confidence, as I'm sure most people most footballers do. But uh I just wish he would show his confidence on the pitch more than he does. Um, you know, most of the time, most Tottenham fans complain about him over the last three or four years. Most of the time, we call him Harry sideways or whatever. Right? He he always passes the ball sideways. He's he's had a better season this season than he has in previous. I won't take mm. I won't take that away from him. But I just think we've upped. We, we've gone to another level with Benson mm. Core. We've gone to another level with, with Kulisevsky. And so I think that the, the shape of the team now is going to dictate certain things. If we're going to go to a 3-4-3, three, three, we're going to need to have two midfielders that are more uh, utility, that can do everything. They can defend, they can pass, they can move forward. Skip can do that. Benton Core can do that. Hoiberg can do that. Harry mm. Winks can't. So for me, I think Harry Winks days are mm. numbered in the 3-4-3. Three, three. Yeah. Yeah. No, look, I couldn't agree more. I I do think it's numbered. I think with Harvey White coming through, I think, can he live off his homegrown status for that much longer? I'm not sure, you know. Absolutely. And even last time out, last time out, Dave Hoybeard came into the squad, took his spot. Hoybeard, you know, yeah. the Winks came in, you know, Winks is, was immediately displaced. Yeah. And Hoybeard was competing for the same spot that Winks was. And yeah. Skip has now come in and has taken Winks' spot. Harvey mm. White will probably come in, perhaps maybe take Harry Winks' spot. I'm not yeah. sure. Bentoncourt, if you think about it, that sort of logic with Skip and Hoybeard, taking his spot, I, I mean, there's no doubt. I think Benton Core will as well. Yeah, I think so too. I do. And uh, and uh, uh, Philip, I agree with what Old Soul is saying here. He says, Heuberg seemed to trust Benton Core when he came in. Heuberg seems to try to cover the whole of midfield when Winks is in. And it does look like that to me, to be fair, Philip. Would you agree? Yeah, I think so. I mean, let's face it now. We've got a situation where four into two won't go. We've goals we've basically goals. got four players looking to get two two slots right uh it's i guess pretty much obvious that harry winks is going to be at the bottom of that pile when Betancourt so uh you know settles in um yeah well you can you can you can see where hoiberg's coming from there he's looking at a player that's come from juventus in one of the hardest leagues in europe to slot in beside him as against harry winks who he's been watching for the last season or so and probably not too impressed with what he sees a lot of the time so yeah, I would say Bet Heiberg and Bettencourt will probably be our two, yeah. our, our our first choice holding midfielders. 
Uh, which, it's a bit hard on, her, on Oliver Skip, though, as well, you know, because Oliver Skip has done nothing wrong, really. But yeah. I think it's going to be a case of he'll be the backup and yeah. Winks will probably be ending up very lucky to get on the bench. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I, I do. I, I do think so. I think his time is is probably numbered. And Jack, does Bentecourt have the ability to really transform the middle of this lineup and provide some ball and progression that has been lacking? Does he stand out from Skip, Harry Winks, and Pierre Mahoyberg? And will he eventually displace um, Winks like we were talking about? I think, to be honest, as much as we're saying that he'll displace Harry Winks, I think he's putting pressure on all of them. I think he puts pressure on Hoiberg still. I think he puts pressure on Skip because he can mm -hmm. basically do all of their roles, you know, guys. I think he could do, he can play that deep line playmaker for us. He can also play that sort of box to box sort of player that Hoiberg and Skip have been kind of playing for us. So he kind of is just challenging everybody when you really do think about it. Uh, Bentecourt, I think he'll eventually be into the starting lineup. In terms of what he does that maybe, maybe a Winks wouldn't do, Dave is that ball progression in the sense of like just carrying the ball. It seems like he's much more confident with the ball at his feet, actually carrying yeah. the ball than Harry Winks is. Harry Winks lots of times does look actually quite terrified when he has to carry the ball forwards. He does look actually quite decent in the past few games. He has looked decent at progressing the ball forward when passing it, but he's always been kind of a bit scared when actually carrying the ball forward. He does, he knows, doesn't really have the best touch in the world. At least I would say, whereas Benton Core certainly looks like he would be able to carry the ball at least a bit better than maybe Harry Winks would, at least with a bit more bravery than Harry Winks would. And he also would get more stuck in than Harry Winks would as well in case he were to lose it. So I think he's challenging everybody's spot, not even just Harry Winks's, Dave. He's going to be challenging Hoiberg because he's going to bring the best out of Skip because he can do all their roles. Yep. Yeah. He's a bento box to box, Jack. <laughs> That's what I've been thinking about the whole time. Uh, yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, no, I can't wait to see him start today. I can't wait to see what he has to offer over the course of 90 minutes. Um, look, Shawnee, what Prowse has six goals and five assists this season, nearly all of them from set pieces. Yeah. Is James Ward Prowse the most dangerous, terrifying set piece taker in the Premier League? Um, and should Spurs take extra precautions against fouling anyone near the box? Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. If Southampton like, are going to have sentence, like, is it a death sentence to, you know, basically foul in the box? Yeah. Um, and not just from direct, free, like direct free kicks. He's obviously a, you know, a master class in waiting. Uh, but I also think just generally, you know, any set piece, free kicks around, like, free kicks out wide. If, 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 uh, if we foul Kyle Walker Peters, out on the touchline, but it's within the final third. You know, they've got a chance to whip the ball in and he's someone that can whip the ball in corners as well. And they've got Kalisu, right, who's, uh, he's not suspended today. I, don't, I Hopefully he, he has as, clums, as as clumsy a game as he did yeah. in the first game and gets sent off again. But, um, you know, he, he's handy in the air. They've got some tall players as well. So, you know, I feel like if we are going to have problems today, much like we did against West Ham, we spoke about this before the West Ham game in the Carabao Cup. If, if, uh, if we are going to have problems, it's going to be, Prior, primarily, or um, you know, through through set pieces, and so yeah, the, the 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 midfield two, three, whatever it is, and the back five need to be on their best behaviour, and uh, which is which is a little bit, you know, Romero. If if the ref if the if the referee today is a little bit more whistle happy, Romero needs to make sure that his crunching tackles needs to be absolutely perfect and spot on because mm. if they're yeah. a, a half a second early or a half a second late, then. We could be giving away lots of um, kind of free opportunities for them if we can keep the game flowing and, and not give away too much, too much in the way of free kicks or uh, or, or, or corners. Then I think we'll we'll uh, suffocate them in the in the open play. But set pieces is the danger area for me. No, spot on, spot on, Jacob. They're absolutely crucial for top four. We have to be beating teams like this, my man. Um, no excuses. If not, then how do you expect to get top four? These haven't been beating a top sixteen. Uh, apart apart from West Ham since since um, all season, so we should be beating them. To be honest with you, Jacob, I, Angel Matos says from Uruguay to White Hart Lane, Rodrigo was his name. Oh, Lolo Bentoncore, Lolo Bentoncore, Lolo Bentoncore, Rodrigo was his name. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Rodrigo was uh, his name. Oh, <laughs> there's actually um, a page on on Twitter, man. You know that are trying to get songs for all the Spurs players. Get over there and send that into them, mate. Um, and yeah, absolutely love that. That's absolutely quality. 
Uh, anyone else, uh, Jackie, to say to Hangel? Uh, Lolo Bentecourt, hopefully he will be... Uh, I, I want him to do all the best for us on hell. Absolute... Uh, just i think he's a beauty he looked uh, he looked immense coming off the bench dave the way he just even towered over winks you know if we're being subbed on the man mm. is just he's actually our tallest midfielder he looks like even just the look of him just by his face he looks like he's played at world class sort of levels alongside world class sort of players and situations at his age he's already played in higher profile games higher profile situations than our entire midfield basically combined I don't know on hell. I'm looking forward to it. Long live Lolo. Let's have Lolo have a beautiful season and a long career with Spurs. Big up, eh? Ang, Ang Hell. Big yourself up, my man. And make sure you've seen that all the way throughout today's game. What a legend. Big yourself up, my man. And we have Val Taylor <coughs> um, has become a new YouTube member. Absolutely up, brilliant. Val. Love that. Um, and hopefully, hopefully we get to see you on on, on Mondays uh, for all the fan shows, uh, Val. Big yourself up. And of course, we was in the chat earlier on. Letting us know that Ben Tecor got his nickname from his younger brother. Um, mm. um, he, his younger brother couldn't say Rodrigo. He used to say Loligo, which became Lolo. So that's why he got his yeah. nickname. Val, Val, the history teacher, you got to love that. Big yourself yeah. up, my man. Big yourself up. That, that, that's quality. But look, hopefully we do see you on um, on Monday, Val. Uh, I really do hope so. Um, Philip, Lucas has struggled to impress recently. And has struggled to do normal Lucas-like things on the pitch. What's he been doing differently, um, slash maybe wrongly, or, or do you see him? And do you see him turning this around for this match? Well, I mean, if you the front three of Kane, Son, and Lucas, um, like I still, I still love Lucas. I think, I think, I, I love his. What, what word am I looking for here? His energy, he's like when he gets the ball and runs at players, there's nothing more exciting watching him mm -hmm. now. Chances are he'll pass to a Southampton player at the end of the run. That's the problem. He just not his end his end pass is not good enough. And frequently, yeah. you know, has a negative result for us. But now I, I stick with him because I mean the, the sight of him running at defenders causes them to panic a little bit. It's a bit like your man Sam Maximum last night playing for Newcastle. Yeah. He is yeah, Maximum like terrorized the Everton defence. They couldn't lay a finger on him. And it, mm. now the difference being he had an end result last night. You know, he, he made the pass that made a goal. So I would stick with Lucas. I mean, let's face it, you, you, who can say a bad word about Lucas uh, going back to May 19? You know, the guy who wrote himself into folklore then. And he's, if he could just be a little bit more consistent with his with his end product. But now that he's got, he's got competition now, Kulachevsky be looking for his spot. Bergwijn up to a point looking for his spot. So I'm hoping that the extra pressure that's putting on him will make him react. And uh, let, let's say like, if he doesn't score himself, a run, he could be running through the middle and a ricochet bring the ball to Harry Kane, he'll bury it. We just we just need his pace and we need his his um, enthusiasm. He loves the club. You know, the man, that, yeah. like the, the more than Harry Kane and... Uh, um, Certain other players in the team, he 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 bleeds blue blood, and I think we should, you know, a lot. I, I, I just find it very hard to, to, to say anything against Lucas. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's 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 uh committed. Sorry, yeah. sorry, I thought the noise there. He's committed to the cause, and I love the way when he scores, he's straight up to heaven like that. Do you ever yeah. notice that? <laughs> he's uh, ah, oh, hello. I have a feeling now he, he could have a big role to play tonight. Hopefully he does. I hope so. I definitely hope so. Uh, DG says Lucas gets terrible service 90% of the time. Um, Jack, Sean, any uh, want to come in on this one? Sometimes, okay, this is what I, I, there are two parts of this. Yes, where there are times when Lucas Mora will receive a hospital pass from players like Harry Winks um, and will make, a lot of it like and will actually you know spin out of it and he'll make something out of nothing there are a lot of times when lucas Moore will actually receive a hospital pass and do a lot with it and actually create something out of nothing mm -hmm. there are also times when lucas mora will pick up the ball with tons of acres of space behind him and then we'll just run into some blind alley and lose the ball in a situation when you probably shouldn't lose the ball you should keep the ball he is kind of a there are two sides of the lucas coin i would say when it comes to that i do feel like 
he doesn't get the best of service sometimes. Uh, I feel like we should put more balls in the box, especially with his leaping ability and his uh, his aerial ability. But I, I think there are times when he does incredible with the ball at his feet, and then there are times when I think he can be quite wasteful. So I think there are two sides of the coin there, DG. Yeah, no, I think I, I think that's fair. I do think it's fair. Look, you know, it's like even when he does get good balls, he does a lot of like he can run into blind alleys sometimes, and a lot of his end product like passing it or that. It's, it's not great, um, but look on the on the flip side, he's he's had a good season this season. He's been consistent under both managers Nuno and and Conte. It's probably is his, his and first Jose. Time. He played well under Jose as well. You know, especially yeah. at the latter end of the during the bad days of Jose, he was our best player. I would say actually as well to Lucas's credit, often when we have our worst performances, like our worst levels of. Uh, of of effort levels of commitment and everything you often would say lucas is the one with the best commitment he's often the one that can leave the pitch with his head you know held high i would say so like you said before philip he bleeds spurs through and through there's probably i mean in terms of like actual players that really do love the club like he's certainly up there in like the top two or three i would actually say in that whole squad so at the end of the day we do love lucas and i would say if someone's going to receive the ball with four or five players surrounding him and somehow get out of there you would put your money on lucas yeah no absolutely spot on sorry shani you gonna say no, I was going to say, I, I mean, I, I think like six, I, I agree with, I agree with all of you saying that there's, there's two sides to, to the Lucas coin. I think 65% of the time he's awesome every time. Like yeah. he's one of those guys and you, you always saw him ever since the Liverpool game when we lost, when we lost in the last minute against Liverpool under Mourinho in Christmas of 2020, when our season then fell apart from there on, mm. he stepped up to Jack's point, he stepped up. And when, when we were playing terribly, he stepped up and, and, and made the most out of what we could do with the rest of the season. And since then, his form has been pretty solid, right? So that's whatever that is, uh, you know, a year now of, of uh, 18 months, whatever it is, of, of solid performances. He's better when he comes narrow. He's better when he comes deep. Someone else, I think it was uh, at Beats Entertainment or whatever in the comments is saying the same thing. It's an underrated position. I yeah. don't think you'll find anyone in the Tottenham community that doesn't like Lucas Mora. I think everyone has a soft spot from everyone knows what he can do. He can change a game. He can get the ball. He has got amazing aerial abilities. But you're right, like twenty, like thirty percent of the time, maybe he doesn't come anywhere. But his role isn't necessarily like people always think of a forward and think your your job is to score goals or at least to assist. Yeah. I think he does more more off the ball work. Like even if his stats like don't show his, his he's not maybe not directly or indirectly involved in the goals. The things he does do off the ball. Allow thing allow other players to flourish. Not everyone can be, you know. You've got your workhorses and you've got your show horses, right? And so I think he's a workhorse. He does things to allow other show horses in the team to get yeah. their job done. So mm. I love Lucas. He's on a bit of a dip in form, but uh, generally speaking, I think he's a superstar for Spurs. And I have nothing nothing bad to say about the guy. Mm, interesting, interesting. But, um, everybody, there is uh, keep smashing that like button, guys. Not enough likes on the stream. Let's get it up there. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And um, keep smashing that subscribe button if you are new. Uh, we are going for about another twenty minutes. And um, guys, uh, feel free to get your super chat in. Um, um, it, it's a great way to support myself and Jack on the journey, and we absolutely rely on it. You know, so feel free to get the support in. Um, if if you can't and you're not in a position to, don't worry. Don't feel pressured to. We will get your comments up. As you can see that we've done throughout the whole stream, we will get them up um, on the screen as we go along. Um, who did I ask the last question to? I think you asked Philip, I believe. Philip. But, so uh, but Actually, I think Philip you know, maybe wants another one. I think he yeah, wants another we'll one. Give him another. We'll give him another <laughs> and then we have some Harry Kane questions. <laughs> Philip, we'll throw another one at you. Stephen Bergvine was one of the last uh, was one of the few bright spots for Spurs when he started the Premier League match against Chelsea, and it will be interesting to see if Lucas Moore's uh, Lucas Moore's quiet performance against Brighton um, does see um, if Conte wants to rotate or not. If he does, could it be the Dutch man who gets the chance despite his big miss against Brighton, or could we see Kulazeski get the nod, who could have had two assists if our finishing had been better? I think there's going to be a couple of changes tonight from Saturday. Maybe mm. two or three. I'm not quite sure who's going to be. That could well be one of them. You know, like I wouldn't be a bit surprised if either one of Kulicheski or Betancourt starts tonight. Not both of them. One of them might start. Yeah. You might bring a surprise and put Kulicheski in tonight. 
Like it's it's all we don't know, but I mean it, it's it could well be. I think um, Bergwijn's miss. If Bergwijn had scored that goal against Brighton, he'd be assuring the start. The mm. fact that he didn't, I think, may leave leave things open. I I wouldn't be. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting on the fence here, but I wouldn't be a bit surprised if any of the three of them started. You know, it could be it could just be any of the three, but I do think there will be a change or two because we've got to keep it fresh. We've only got what four days to go before the Wolves game. Mm. And in my mind, that's going to be a tougher match than tonight. So you know, very in- yeah. interesting to see what the what the. Uh, and, and just one thing, not not entirely related to this. But I'm just after reading the comment that Conte made yesterday. Apparently, he ran into Christian Eriksen yeah. in the hotel mm. and made the comment that he'd like to have him back at the club. So I'll tell you that that could be something to watch come the summer, depending how Eriksen gets on with Brentford. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. Like you wouldn't like it if you were a Brentford fan to have uh, a Tottenham manager who used to work with the guy tapping him up, basically. You know, I, I, but, uh, I think the, he ran into him in the hotel is a bit of a misnomer. I'd say that the, the spies were out and saying an he's elevator dead. talk, an <laughs> elevator <laughs> talk between. Yeah, the two but he also <laughs> he also he also added like not only did he run into him, but he then also let like let out to the press. Yeah, he's a great player, a good a good person. I'd love to work with him again. We'll see what will happen. Like he's yeah. just arrived at Brentford. <laughs> if you're a yeah. Brentford fan or the Brentford yeah. manager, you're probably not yeah. happy with that kind of uh, behaviour. But you know, it's, it's only a six month loan, so we'll see what happens. Or a six month uh, contract, right? So it's been that's been done that's been done to us enough times in the past. Yeah, I know. So I know. Look at the Williams. I'm, I'm okay with it as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think let, 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 it's Conte putting down a marker. You know, you don't mess with me, or I'm I'm the boss. You know, I'm the man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully we'll pull at Brentford, and then uh, yeah, well, that that could solve our uh, our Love creative it. price. Uh, it's just crisis. a shame that yeah. Brentford have played their match at White at the Spurs Stadium. I would love to see the reaction Ericsson would yeah. get. Him. You know, it really would be because he deserves every bit of it. No, nah, he yeah. would have got a boo from me, to be honest with you, Philip. The way he left the club, I still can't forgive him. He would have got a boo. I'm being honest. I would have booed yeah, him. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. You know, but I, I'm just sort of taking the wider picture there, what he did for us, you know. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, probably. But, you know, look, I can only remember what he left me with. My brain doesn't stretch back that far in a year. I just good point, though. Good point. Oh, yeah, it's fair good. Fair yeah, fair it is. He did, he, did down, he did down tools for a year, didn't he, so... Uh, yeah, you know. yeah, but uh, look, moving on to the big man, the one and only, the best goal scorer in world football. It's Harry Kane. Two questions Ooh. on this guy. Let's go. It's the big man, Harry Kane. Let's go. <laughs> God, I love the guy, honestly. Scoring goals left, right, and center. So many people are loving it again lately. And we will start with Jack. Jack, Harry Kane is in flying form right now. But he did fail to score against Southampton after probably one of the most ridiculous offside decisions we've seen this season. By the way, it wasn't really spoke about after, but yeah, because it happened to United yesterday, everyone's speaking about it now. It's it's fucking ridiculous. You know, big, big club biased. But um, Jack, do you think Harry Kane will have any trouble against Southampton's back line today? No, I feel like he'll be a bit hungry, Dave. You know, it's kind of like he was just kind of a bit toyed with. He, he he just was so hard done by, so unlucky against Southampton last time around. I expect Harry Kane to be nice and hungry, especially in front of the home fans, Dave. You know, it seems like he really has been getting a nice, you know, celebration, a nice kind of reception from the home fans as well when he scores. It seems to just be back to his normal self, you know, back against a team where he knows he deserved a goal and knows that he probably should have won that game. Uh, with that decision, if it actually had been done correctly. I think Dave, Harry Kane, he's going to be nice and hungry. I would actually add as well, Sonny, I expect to actually be very hungry for a goal as well. The guy hasn't exactly scored, I feel like, too recently. Uh, he's he's playing really well, but you know, it's just not really to the normal world-class levels of Sonny that we're used to. So I also expect Sonny actually to be really hungry uh, to maybe score in this one as well as Harry Kane. Mm. Yeah, no, hundred percent for sure, for sure. Someone just saying to check the news feed about um, um, Gareth Bale, I believe somehow signing. Yeah, some I can't return. see that. I, I, haven't seen it. I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet, my man. Um, just, no, just news, just noise. Yeah. Dark song G twenty one. He says, "Sorry, I'm late. I just woke up. It's four forty five uh, kickoff today. I predict Son and Kane will share in the three 0 win today." 
Um, Man United going to lose to Southampton in the weekend. Just ask some G. It must be early for you, my man, because, uh, you know, usually you're a lot more positive than 3 0, my man. Usually you're saying 4 or 5 0. You must <laughs> be tired. I'll forgive you, Dark Sun G. <laughs> but it is good to see you in 4 45 a.m. kickoff, man. Yeah, that was a brutal. That was a brutal. Jack, anything uh, you want to say to Dark Sun G? That was a brutal kickoff time, Stark Sun G. I know you've had a lot worse ones than I have, but I have been there for those 4 45 a.m. ones. But. Dark Sun G, I, I really hope we give Southampton a smacking because, Dave, his whole logic here is that if we give Southampton a smacking, that means they'll kind of take up all that frustration, all that sort of kind of, you know, uh, built up energy from, you know, deliver, you know, having being delivered a bit of a spanking. They'll take it over to Man United and then do the same thing on to them. So hopefully that does happen where they return the bit of favor that we give them. So. I, I completely want that to happen, Dark Sun G. And then as well, I do want the Wolves as well to get that result against the Scum. I do hope Wolves get a result against the Scum too. Yeah. Uh, but 4.45 a.m. kickoff, Dark Sun G already starting off his day. He's going to probably be up for a full 24 hours on a normal Wednesday, or I guess Thursday for him when I think about it. So Dark Sun G, just want to say, my man, absolute legend. Pick yourself up, brother. Yeah, big up Dark Sun G. And, and Ken and Son, believe me, my man, they're definitely going to score today. The, the telepathic communication is back between them two boys. But big up Dark Sun G. And Sean, has Harry Kane put his early season woes behind him? And is he standing to look like, is he starting to look like <coughs> a striker from recent seasons? And is it me or does he look a lot more fitter? He does look fitter. He does look fitter. He looks like he's put on a little bit of muscle. Looks like he's put. He lost a little, lost a couple of pounds. He's got. Uh, he's got the stamina. That I mean, no, no one's ever doubted his stamina. But um, he does. He just looks like he's more mobile. I don't know whether he's doing yoga. He's getting a little bit more, like a little bit more flexibility out of his legs. Yeah. I don't know what, what's up with him, but he looks like a man, like a phoenix that's risen from the ashes. Everyone or a lot of people thought that his Tottenham days were numbered. He wanted out. I still don't know what will happen at the end of the season if things go pear-shaped. You know, he's getting to that point in his career now where if we can't offer him Champions League football, does he? Is, he, is the same noise, as the same news feed going to start happening again? But I'm not even worried yeah. about that because we're not going to finish fifth or sixth. They're going to finish third <laughs> or fourth. Outside chance of second, in my opinion, because I'm peak delusional. But I do <laughs> think that we are... I think that Harry Kane is back to his absolute best... He's got a manager that he has absolute faith in. He's got some players, the players that were dross. He's the sort of person, whether he like, he might have liked Deli Ali as a person, but he might have hated him in the club. Mm. If, if Harry Kane wants to get to this level in his career and he's looking at the players who are playing their FIFA or braiding their hair or doing whatever they're doing, he's probably this, like a Cristiano Ronaldo, probably looks at some of the people in the, in the, in the lunchroom going like, why are you having chips and lasagna, mate? Like, come on, like mm. treat your career yeah, like uh, like it's like it's sacred, like it's whatever sacred, right? And yeah. I think that he might have that same kind of approach. And those sorts of players that would have the catch up, that wanted the catch up, that would be upset that there was no catch up. Yeah. They've gone. We've got new players coming in. <laughs> I think Harry Kane is probably waking up every day, going, "I can do it. I can make it happen with the club I love." And I'm going to put every every single inch and 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 moment of my of my soul into every game and so 100 percent, we're going to see harry kane score 12 15 more goals before the end of the season i've got absolutely no doubt about that no neither do i i i definitely think so too i, I definitely think he'll still hit the 20 goal mark i think he you know harry kane is is catching up maybe for a bit of last time and and that's why i i think we'll get top four son you know this i missed a lot of chances first half of the season although i did bang it in the goals I reckon yep. he's only going to get more clinical. I think Kane's, Kane's only going to go get more clinical. Kulazeski probably had five or six goals in there. Stevie B, hopefully, with another couple. You know, I definitely think um, um, I, I definitely think top four is definitely on, especially with 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 with, um, with, with Kane. I definitely I agree with you, Sean. I actually think he will score about another 15, 15 uh, towards the end of the season. 12, really 12 to fifteen more goals, easy. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely especially if we go on an F especially with an FA Cup run. If we can get into the semi-final at least, he's got 15 inside of him. Oh, I love that. I love that. Dark Sun G says today is the day Sun and Kane will break Lampard and Drogba's record. Wow. I love how cute he is fit when Dyer is out. Also, I love how we have Bentecourt when Skip is out. This is why Paratici is a Don and God. Um we'll we'll, we'll let uh, we'll let uh, who else come in on this? 
sprinkling. I'll take it away. I'll take it away. I did a I did a video on that even on the second channel. So you know, might as well. You know, Dark Sun G. This is exactly what I was talking about with the signings of Kulu and Bentecor, and even with Romero and Sonny coming back fit. I know it looks like our squad is thin on paper, but Antonio Conte he has lots of players that are he can actually use and players that can play maybe multiple sort of positions and do the work and kind of the 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 hard work that he actually needs in the squad with the likes of Benton Court, Let's say Skip is out. Like, how do you replace Skip? We've often kind of thought it's impossible to replace Skip. Maybe you can't replace him entirely, but certainly you could probably get something similar with the likes of Benton Court, which makes it a great signing. The same thing with uh, Harry Winks. Harry Winks lovers out there. You probably could say Benton Court can do something similar to what Harry Winks does. And then the same goes for Hoybjerg. For Hoybjerg lovers, Benton Court can pro probably step in for Hoybjerg maybe when need be. Same thing with Kulis if Sonny is out, Kulusevsky can maybe hop in and take Sonny's position. If Harry Kane is out, Sonny maybe takes up top. Kulusevsky goes to Sonny's position, or even Kulusevsky takes Harry Kane's position. We have a lot more kind of depth than we act than it really looks like on paper. I'm really happy about a Darks MG. Paratici is proving to me that he is a god. Hopefully, he gets those free transfers in through the door this summer, and then we'll be looking at a really nice fit and proper squad. And if they beat that Lampard and Drogba record, the best Premier League duo of all time, hands down. Yeah. No, big, big up, Dark Sun G, my man. Absolute legend. Hopefully you enjoy Jack's answer. Sean, do you want to chime in anything there? No. You don't want to say a part each he's cooking or he's a god or he's a god? Oh, I'll just, I'll just give him the sprinkle, the sprinkle of salt. You, you, you know that a, a, a chef is never finished. Okay. He's, ne he's never. I he's want never him to got... go to Salt Bay's restaurant. I want him to go to Salt Bay's <laughs> restaurant, and then that will just be the. That'd ultimate. be the ultimate photo for me, Jack. That that would be in a frame. You know, take the missus, take the missus out or or the parents out of the frame. Put him in, in the Salt Bay restaurant in there for sure. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Paratigy. Yeah. Hopefully, Paratigy. Uh, yeah, but yeah, but to Dark Sanji's point, though, no, yeah, listen, it's it's. I don't think I don't think it's uh, down to Paratici that the 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 fitness gods have shone that when when we got Skippy out, we've got someone else who's stepping in, and you know, and Cootie is fit when Dyer's out, and so yeah, that's just down to luck or whatever. But yeah. at the end of the day, I do think Paratici's had an absolute worldie. What was looking like an absolute shit show in the transfer window up until mm -hmm. the 29th or the 30th turned out to, in my opinion, be a, a stroke of genius. Uh, mm -hmm. And Paratici um, is in no small part responsible for that, but I think he has to do it. He has to go again in the summer because he can't keep going back to Juventus to feed off the scraps of his previous previous career, right? So I think he needs to um, to, to prove us, prove everybody that the people that like him are correct and the people that doubt him are wrong, and that will happen in the summer. And it will be so much easier for him to do that if we finish fourth, third, or second, as I am having um, more and more uh, positive thoughts about. Fifth or sixth is um, unthinkable, not just because of where we are, where we can be, but also because of the financial consequences. Like if we finish fifth or sixth or seventh, you know, yeah, all of the yeah. plans, best laid plans, then go to rest. So, yeah. oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, and Philip, anything you want to say on, on Don Paratici? Is he cooking? Yeah, he's always cooking. Yeah, I mean, he's not finished yet. I mean, he's, he's only getting, he's only, he's only at the halfway through the main course at the moment. It's the best Sorry. he's ever come, you know. <laughs> but uh, I just want, I just want to make a comment of Harry Kane there. Yeah. Um, I said on the fans show the other night, that I don't think I've ever seen Harry Kane in such good physical condition as he is at the moment. Yeah, you did say that. Mentally, actually, and, yeah. mentally and physically. Yeah. Because let's face it, first half of the season under Nuno, he was playing like he had lead in his boots. He looked like he'd been just back from a fortnight mm -hmm. in Benidorm on the on the piss, and just looked like <laughs> he, 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 was he wasn't mm -hmm. Harry Kane that we all know and love. Now Conte's come in. Conte is a manager that's, that is is meeting and maybe even exceeding Harry Kane's Harry Kane's expectations. Mm. The two boys yeah. are obviously in sync with each other. You know, they 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 both need each other. And I'm more than happy to see that comedy come out with the other day about Paris, about Conte praising yeah. ways that he does. So I really expect I, I'll go so far as to say Kane is going to go on a razzle of goals now, like he did at, towards the end of the the season. We came second. I mean, yeah. he's going to get 15 goals at least, if not 20 more goals this season. Well, yeah, 20 because, more! Wow! I thought I was you know, punching with 15. <laughs> <laughs> go, Phil. <laughs> You probably, probably are delusional, but what the hell? He suffered enough early on this season, but watching Harry struggle, and it was tough to watch him. It really was tough to watch. It was like it was like a, a, a thoroughbred racehorse struggling yeah. in a novice race. 
Yeah. It really yeah, was. yeah, yeah. And now You're look right. at him. He's winning the derby again. Hmm. There you go. Uh, yeah, very good. Great, great analogy. Great analogy, actually. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Honestly, Philip, you know, I thought I couldn't get any more in love or pumped up about Harry Kane, and you've only gone and done it. Absolutely. <laughs> love I love it. Honestly, five and M20 goals, Philip, are coming over the next two games. I can feel it. Faz yeah. Rad says, I feel Delhi will get Lampard sack. Disgust. Oh. <laughs> Come on, you first. Awful, um, wow. He was awful last night. Awful. He, he was at fault for the second uh, Newcastle goal. Uh, the one yeah. thing I will say about him, at least he's toned the hairstyle down a bit. It looks a little bit yeah. more normal now. But no, I tell you, if I was an Everton fan now, I would be sincere. I would be extremely worried if that's going to be the level of his performance over the next few games. He just wasn't there. I mean, half the time I was looking to see had he been substituted because there was he just wasn't been mentioned. And then when he was, he gives away the ball and they score from it. You know, yeah. it wasn't it wasn't just the the attitude when he lost the ball. It was he didn't even track back. No, like with the no. ball, he lost the ball seven, eight yards outside their own Everton's area, and within four seconds, it was in the back of the net. But players that were like the strikers of Everton were tracking back, and he still didn't make it into the box, as far as I could tell. He just didn't care. You know, no. the only thing Everton can do is to they, they put Donny Van der Beek on the bench, bring start him, and put Deli Ali on the bench, and let Deli Ali know that's that sort of that that attitude's not going to fly at Everton. He'll get. Yeah. He'll get chased out he of the city pretty quickly. There's no player to have in a dogfight, I'm afraid. No. Mm. It's such a shame. Yeah, uh, it is. It is. Well, it is. It is. No, it is. But, you know, at the end of the day, if he doesn't want to, if, if, if he wants the benefits of football without living like one, well, that's what's going to happen. You know, it, 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 the, the, the path has been paved by people before, and he's only going down that path. You know, every, everything was there to try and. Help stop him, you know, um, um, and everything else. Jose was trying to tell him, you know. In fact, what did Jose say to him? That in a couple of years you'll sit here where I am and you'll be thinking mm. back something like that, and yeah. you'll be looking, fuck, where did where did my career go? And you know, Daddy Ali laughed at him, thought he knew better, thought he was the big boy. Well, mm. tough titties, right? Everything now, you you can go down with the toughies. Um, but yeah. look, we, we, we'll leave it there. Uh, we, we'll give everybody a chance to plug their their stuff. Philip, my man, anything you would like to plug? Uh, the invasion of the Harris Army in London on Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> That's going to be good. <laughs> That's There's actually good. a good few people that said they want to meet up with us for a few drinks, Philip, so should be oh, a good yeah. day. That'll be no problem. As long as we yeah. don't forget, to, as long as we get to the match on time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we will. I won't miss that. I'll tell you that. I won't miss Harry warming up. That's for sure. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, um, yeah. um, Sean, where can people find you, my man? Cheers, Dave. You can find me, guys, at Spurs Talk Show. Uh, I think the link's in the in the um, in the comment section. Uh, you've, I'm, I'm obviously I'm on here quite a lot, uh, and I get around the uh, the channels. But my home is Spurs Talk Show. It's a very it's a very small channel. It's fledgling. It's got about 375 subscribers or something. But we're just getting going. So anybody that wouldn't mind uh, just spending 10 seconds to go over and hit the subscribe button, it would mean the world to me. I'd love to be able to get to uh, you know 400 um, before the end of February or something. So really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, you'll find me here in about two hours' time as well for the game. So <laughs> no, don't sure go anywhere. You know. <laughs> For sure, you everybody, please do get over and check out the, um, Sean's channel. Look, I, I, I'm on it whenever I can as well, and I absolutely love going on it. So please do get over there and and, and check it out and smash that subscribe button. He's a good lad. He's a good laugh, and, and you won't regret it for sure. Jack, my man, where can people find you, brother? Yeah, they can find me over on the second channel, Dave, Flat Cat Bureau Talk. Uh, had two different live streams come out recently with Darius. Uh, one of them, he and I kind of just broke down the best and worst sort of transfers in the entire window, not just Premier League, kind of also, you know, included some other teams outside of the Premier League. Also did kind of a video where we kind of looked at our early season predictions, kind of broke down where we went wrong and maybe what the rest of the season could look like. Going to do a few more videos kind of talking about some early sort of predictions I made kind of regarding managers and like uh, young kind of players that I thought would break out this season. Lots of content coming out as well as Champions League is just upon us, everybody. So we will also be doing lots of watch alongs over there so i would just say four more away and i think until 950 or something like that 950 so let's get there wow. today please 
Uh, it's been an absolute ride with the Flat Cap Army. Absolute legends. Every single one of you guys that have supported the channel, really thankful for. Uh, but four away from 950, lots of channel or lots of content coming up. Really going to ramp it up a bit more. Uh, so really appreciate, though, all the support that I've already been given, though. Guys, please do get over there and check out the Flat Cap Your Talk. Let's make it by stream come true. You know, um, look, Jack, Jack is honestly one of the nicest guys in the business. And what you see on camera is exactly the way he is off camera. He's, he's such an absolute gent. So please get over there, smash that subscribe button and make that dream happen, happen for the guy. We'll just take a couple more comments and then we will end off. Um, Sue Smith, I do hope you're feeling better and hopefully we do get the win for you today. Come on, you Spurs. Big up, Sue Smith. <laughs> Stefan Bloy says, big up, lads. Beers and Spurs tonight. And the missus is out. Ooh. What more do you want? My man, honestly. I mean, light the candles, run a bat, get the rose petals out. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> what more does a guy want? Free reign in a whole house. My man, you are absolutely living life. I am jealous, brother. But big up, Stefan. Big up, my man. Um, DG telling people to make sure they like it. Exactly. You tell them, DG. Moondog says he has subscribed to Sean as well. Um, FG, uh, Formula One fan says, when is the We Are Tottenham TV pump up on Come On You Spurs? I'm going over there now. I'm leaving and it's starting at quarter past six, my man. So hopefully I will see you there, brother. We have Rajesh Sharma sending love from, from the top of the world. Um, NP Jack Nepal's is it? Or um, sending live from the top of the world. Absolutely enjoyed the show. Nepal. Come on, you Spurs. I'm not sure what that flag could be, Nepal. Maybe it is Nepal. Oh, you could Nepal. Be yeah, I think it is. I think it is. Dave, you're more spot on. I'm actually, I play a lot of Geoguessr. Uh, play a lot of Geoguessr too, Dave, so I actually should know that. Uh, my my old geography teacher, if you are tuning in, you'd be proud I got that one right. You've done the <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> really Pico. appreciate wow. it, really. Let me know. Let me know in the comments or even choose back in. Uh, I'm checking right now. I'm holding you accountable. They're all saying it's Nepal. They're all saying it's Nepal. Yeah, it is. It is. Absolute legend. (laughs) Really appreciate it as well. Really generous as well of you. Really generous as well. Uh, I'm loving that you're enjoying the show. Hopefully you're going to be enjoying the win as well. Uh, Celebrate it and just scream, come on, you Spurs, from the top of the mountain, from the top of the world, my man. Pick yourself up. And man, let, let, let me know how you end up getting uh, you got into supporting Spurs, my man. Let me know from over there. And and you know, by the way, you know, great country for a good bit of uh, hiking and everything else as well. So big yourself <laughs> up, man. And climbing. Yeah. If you're thinking about going for a walk, maybe well, don't obviously- start in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, me and the old lad, me and the old lad do a bit of like it from time to time. We go through phases, and uh, no, so I, I do like it. I do like it. But big up, big up, my man, all the way from the pod. Gideon Gubin says, guys, hope you enjoy the game tonight. And remember, if Darty starts, we're definitely going to smash him. He's going to finish the season strong. Do you know what, Gideon? I absolutely admire your love, um, your your love for Darty. I actually really do. I I, I admire it. Um, I will say I do think there's probably more players you could probably represent that might that might give you a bit of a, a, a better outcome every week. But <laughs> you know what? Stick by it. You know, I stuck by Harry when he was getting absolutely caned. He's turned <clears> it around. <throat> so stick by your man. He might just turn it around, get him. But big yourself up, brother. Absolute legend. Um, yeah, but look, we're gonna end off there. I think I've pleased everyone today. Spurs fans, my old geography teacher. You know, we, we pleased a lot of people today. Absolutely love it. So, guys, that is the Spurs talk show for Sean. Get over and check that out. Flat cap your talk for Jack. Get over and check that out. In terms of me and Philip Brady, well, we will be there Sunday to absolutely liven up the pre-match around the game. Make sure you're there or be square. But Mm. we will be in a pub. We will be sitting down. And whoever wants to come and join us, feel free to come for a point. It'd be great to meet absolutely every single one of you. I'll be with you guys as well. And Shawnee, Shawnee, Ellie, um, Oliver Freeman, um, one of my mates, Dermot, there's going to be loads of us. So just come down, meet us for a point. It'd be great to see everybody. Let's have a go, good sing song before the game. And then now Captain Morgan to warm the body before we hit the um, before we hit the stands. But we are going to leave it there. Next time, you, if you want to see me, it is over on the We Are Tottenham TV pump up, starting in 20 minutes time. Make sure you get over there. Show your Irish brother the support and some love. And I'll see you back all here for half seven for the watch long. But before we go, Rajesh is saying, lads, I need to get this in. 
mate, we even have an official supporters club wow. here. Not many wow. numbers, but got the passion stand up all night for the win. Oh my god. Wow. Unbelievable, Rajesh. So what an uh, absolute Rajesh. legend, my man. Look, it doesn't fan. matter. That is a fan. That is a fan. No, it is. It is. There's just so many people all around. I mean, like you have Dark Song GD guys from Australia, New Zealand. Um, you know, even sometimes with Jack in America, the guys in Canada and everything else, the times that people get up yeah. around the world to support this club. I, I'll be honest, before I started YouTube, I was it's not something I was really kind of sort of aware of. I knew we had a global fan base, but the way people get up religiously to watch it, no matter what's going on, and um, no matter what time of the day is, is absolutely unbelievable. But my man, it doesn't matter how big the Spurs, Spurs Sports Club is. The main thing is, is that you're Spurs fans and you're representing us over there with absolute pride. And um, look, you know, hopefully if there's anybody in here in this chat, anyone else from Nepal or any other country nearby, you know, get get in contact with Rajesh and, and you know, get over and, and, and get a member of the Spurs Supporters Club. Let me know. Do you have a little um, a little pub or anything that you go to try not to put some games in? And, and, and what do you drink, my man? But look, come back here, Rajesh, <laughs> at 7 o'clock or half 7, and we'll be here for the watch long. We'll have more of a chat then, my man. Everybody, over and out. In Harry Kane, we trust. In Conte, we trust. As always, come on, you Spurs. Come, come on, you Spurs. In Conte, we trust. He's <laughs> Harry Kane, please be my Valentine. <laughs>